The Holy Bible, the King James Version. Read by Alexander Scorvey. The first book of the Chronicles, chapter 1. Adam, Sheth, Enosh, Kenan, the Hallelel, Jered, Henoch, Methuselah, Lamech, Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The sons of Japheth, Gomer, and Magog, and Madai, and Javan, and Tubal, and Meshech, and Tyrus. And the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz, and Riphath, and Togarma. And the sons of Javan, Elisha, and Tarshish, Kittim, and Dodanim. The sons of Ham, Cush, and Mizraim, Put, and Canaan. And the sons of Cush, Seba, and Havila, and Sabta, and Rehama, and Septika. And the sons of Rehama, Sheba, and Dedan. And Cush begat Nimrod. He began to be mighty upon the earth. And Mizraim begat Ludim and Anamim and Lehabim and Naphtuhim, and Pathrusim and Kasluhim, of whom came the Philistines, and Kaphthorim. And Canaan begat Zidon his firstborn, and Heth, the Jebusite also, and the Amorite, and the Girgashite, and the Hivite, and the Archite, and the Sinite, and the Arbadite, and the Zamorite, and the Hamathite. The sons of Shem. Elam, and Asher, and Arphaxad, and Lud, and Aram, and Uz, and Hull, and Kether, and Meshach. And Arphaxad begat Shelah, and Shelah begat Eber. And unto Eber were born two sons. The name of the one was Peleg, because in his days the earth was divided. And his brother's name was Joktan. And Joktan begat Almodad, and Shelef, and Hazar Maveth, and Jira. Hadoram also, and Uzal, and Dikla, and Ebo, and Abimael, and Sheba, and Ophir, and Havilah, and Jobab. All these were the sons of Joktan. Shem, or Faxad, Shelah, Eber, Peleg, Reu, Serug, Nahor, Tira, Abram. The same as Abraham. The sons of Abraham, Isaac, and Ishmael. These are their generations. The firstborn of Ishmael, Nebaioth, then Kedar, and Adbeel, and Mibsam, Mishma and Duma, Massa, Hadad, and Tima, Jeta, Naphish, and Kedema. These are the sons of Ishmael. Now, the sons of Keturah, Abraham's concubine, she bare Zimran, and Jokshan, and Medan, and Midian, and Ishbak, and Shua. And the sons of Jokshan, Sheba, and Dedan. And the sons of Midian, Ephah, and Ephah, and Henoch, and Abida, and Eldea. All these are the sons of Keturah. And Abraham begat Isaac. The sons of Isaac, Esau, and Israel. The sons of Esau, Eliphaz, Ruel, and Jeosh, and Jaalam, and Korah. The sons of Eliphaz, Teman, and Omar, Zephi, and Gatim, Kenaz, and Timnah, and Amalek. The sons of Ruel, Nahath, Zerah, Shammah, and Mizah. And the sons of Seir, Lotan, and Shobal, and Zibion, and Ana, and Dishon, and Ezer, and Dishan. And the sons of Lotan, Horai, and Homam, and Timnah was Lotan's sister. The sons of Shobal, Alian, and Manahath, and Ebal, Shephi, and Onam. And the sons of Zibion, Aya, and Ana. The sons of Ana, Dishon. And the sons of Dishon, Amram, and Eshban, and Ithran, and Kiran. The sons of Ezer, Bilhan, and Zavan, and Jacob. The sons of Dishan, Uz, and Aaron. Now these are the kings that reigned in the land of Edom before any king reigned over the children of Israel. Bela the son of Beor, and the name of his city was Dinhabah. And when Bela was dead, Jobab the son of Zerah of Bozrah reigned in his stead. And when Jobab was dead, Husham of the land of the Temanites reigned in his stead. And when Husham was dead, Hadad the son of Bedad, which smote Midian in the field of Moab, reigned in his stead. And the name of his city was Abith. And when Hadad was dead, Samla of Mesrika reigned in his stead. And when Samla was dead, Shael of Rehoboth by the river reigned in his stead. And when Shael was dead, Baalhanan the son of Akbor reigned in his stead. And when Baalhanan was dead, Hadad reigned in his stead, and the name of his city was Pei, and his wife's name was Mehetabel, the daughter of Matred, the daughter of Mezahab. Hadad died also. And the dukes of Edom were Duke Timna, Duke Elia, Duke Jetheth, Duke Aholibama, Duke Elah, Duke Pinon, Duke Kenaz, Duke Teman, Duke Mibzar, Duke Magdiel, Duke Iram. These are the dukes of Edom. Chapter 2 These are the sons of Israel. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah, Issachar and Zebulun, Dan, Joseph, and Benjamin, Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. The sons of Judah, Ur, and Onan, and Shelah, which three were born unto him of the daughter of Shua the Canaanitess. And Ur, the firstborn of Judah, was evil in the sight of the Lord, and he slew him. 
and Tamar, his daughter-in-law, bare him Perez and Zerah. All the sons of Judah were five. The sons of Perez, Hezron and Hamel. And the sons of Zerah, Zimri and Ethan and Heman and Calcol and Dera, five of them in all. And the sons of Carmi, Achar, the troubler of Israel who transgressed in the thing accursed. And the sons of Ethan, Azariah. The sons also of Hezron that were born unto him, Jeramiel and Ram and Kelubai. And Ram begat Aminadab, and Aminadab begat Nashon, prince of the children of Judah. And Nashon begat Salma, and Salma begat Boaz, and Boaz begat Obed, and Obed begat Jesse. And Jesse begat his firstborn Eliab, and Abinadab the second, and Shema the third, Nethaniel the fourth, Radei the fifth, Ozim the sixth, David the seventh, whose sisters were Zeruiah and Abigail. And the sons of Zeruiah, Abishai and Joab and Asahel, three. And Abigail bare Amasa, and the father of Amasa was Jether the Ishmaelite. And Caleb the son of Hezron begat children of Azubah his wife and of Jerioth. Her sons are these, Jeshur and Shobab and Ardon. And when Azubah was dead, Caleb took unto him Ephrath, which bare him Hur. And Hur begat Uri, and Uri begat Bezalel. And afterward, Hezron went in to the daughter of Maker, the father of Gilead, whom he married when he was threescore years old, and she bare him Segub. And Segub begat Jair, who had three and twenty cities in the land of Gilead. And he took Geshur and Aram with the towns of Jair from them, with Kenath and the towns thereof, even threescore cities. All these belonged to the sons of Maker, the father of Gilead. And after that Hezron was dead in Caleb Ephrata, then Abiah, Hezron's wife, bare him Asher, the father of Tekoa. And the sons of Jeramiel, the firstborn of Hezron, were Ram the firstborn, and Buna, and Oren, and Ozem, and Ahijah. Jeramiel had also another wife whose name was Atara. She was the mother of Onam. And the sons of Ram, the firstborn of Jeramiel, were Maaz, and Jamin, and Eker. And the sons of Onam were Shammai, and Jada. And the sons of Shammai, Nadab, and Abisha. And the name of the wife of Abisha was Abihail, and she bare him Arban, and Molid. And the sons of Nadab, Seled, and Appian. But Seled died without children. And the sons of Appian, Ishai. And the sons of Ishai, Shishan. And the children of Shishan, Alei. And the sons of Jada, the brother of Shammai, Jetha and Jonathan. And Jetha died without children. And the sons of Jonathan, Peleth and Zazah. These were the sons of Jeramiel. Now Shishan had no sons but daughters. And Shishan had a servant, an Egyptian, whose name was Jarha. And Shishan gave his daughter to Jarha, his servant, to wife, and she bare him Atei. And Atei begat Nathan, and Nathan begat Zabad. And Zabad begat Ephlau, and Ephlau begat Obed. And Obed begat Jehu, and Jehu begat Azariah, and Azariah begat Helez, and Helez begat Eliasa. And Eliasa begat Sisamai, and Sisamai begat Shalom. And Shalom begat Jechemiah, and Jechemiah begat Elishama. Now the sons of Caleb, the brother of Jeramiel, were Misha, his firstborn, which was the father of Ziph, and the sons of Marisha, the father of Hebron. And the sons of Hebron, Korah, and Tapua, and Rechem, and Shema. And Shema begat Rahem, the father of Jorkoam, and Rechem begat Shammai. And the son of Shammai was Maon, and Maon was the father of beth -zer. And Ephah, Caleb's concubine, bare Haran, and Mosa, and Gazes, and Haran begat Gazes. And the sons of Jadai, Regem, and Jotham, and Gishan, and Pelet, and Ephah, and Sheah. Maacah, Caleb's concubine, bare Sheba, and Terhena. She bare also Sheah, the father of Madmana, Sheba, the father of Macbina, and the father of Gibeah. And the daughter of Caleb was Aksa. These were the sons of Caleb, the son of Hur, the firstborn of Ephrata. Shobal, the father of kirjath Jearim, Salma, the father of Bethlehem, Hereth, the father of beth -Gader. And Shobal, the father of kirjath jearim had sons, Haroi, and half of the Manahethites. And the families of kirjath jearim the Ithrites, and the Puhites, and the Shumathites, and the Mishraites, of them came the Zariathites, and the Eshteulites. The sons of Salma, Bethlehem, and the Netophathites, Ataroth, the house of Joab, and half of the Manahethites, the Zorites. And the families of the scribes which dwelt at Jabez, the Tyrathites, the Shimeathites, and Sukathites. These are the Kenites that came of Hemath, the father of the house of Rechab. Chapter 3 Now these were the sons of David which were born unto him in Hebron. The firstborn Amnon of Ahinoam the Jezreelitess, 
the second Daniel of Abigail the Carmelitess, the third Absalom, the son of Maacah, the daughter of Talmai, king of Geshur, the fourth Adonijah, the son of Haggai, the fifth Shephatiah of Abital, the sixth Ithrim by Eglah, his wife. These six were born unto him in Hebron, and there he reigned seven years and six months. And in Jerusalem he reigned thirty and three years, and these were born unto him in Jerusalem, Shimea and Shobab and Nathan and Solomon, four, of Bathshua, the daughter of Amiel, Ibhar also, and Elishama and Eliphalet, and Noga and Nepheg and Japhia, and Elishama and Eliada and Eliphalet, nine. These were all the sons of David, beside the sons of the concubines, and Tamar their sister. And Solomon's son was Rehoboam, Abiah his son, Asa his son, Jehoshaphat his son, Joram his son, Ahaziah his son, Joash his son, Amaziah his son, Azariah his son, Jotham his son, Ahaz his son, Hezekiah his son, Manasseh his son, Amon his son, Josiah his son. And the sons of Josiah were the firstborn Johanan, the second Jehoiakim, the third Zedekiah, the fourth Shalom. And the sons of Jehoiakim, Jeconiah his son, Zedekiah his son. And the sons of Jeconiah, Aser, Solathiel his son, Malchiram also, and Pediah, and Shenazer, Zechamiah, Hoshema, and Nedabiah. And the sons of Pediah were Zerubbabel and Shimei, and the sons of Zerubbabel, Meshullam and Hananiah, and Shalomith their sister, and Hashubah, and Ohel, and Berechiah, and Hasadiah, Jushab Hesed, five. And the sons of Hananiah, Pelatiah, and Josiah, the sons of Rephiah, the sons of Arnon, the sons of Obadiah, the sons of Shechaniah. And the sons of Shechaniah, Shemaiah, and the sons of Shemaiah, Hattush, and Igeo, and Bariah, and Neariah, and Shaphat, six. And the sons of Neariah, Elioenai, and Hezekiah, and Azrikam, three. And the sons of Elioenai were Hodiah, and Eliashib, and Peliah, and Achab, and Johanan, and Eliah, and Ananai, seven. Chapter four. The sons of Judah. Perez, Hezron, and Carmi, and Hur, and Shobel. And Riah, the son of Shobel, begat Jahath, and Jahath begat Ahumai, and Lahad. These are the families of the Zorathites. And these were of the father of Etam, Jezreel, and Ishma, and Idbash. And the name of their sister was Hazelelponai. And Penuel, the father of Gedor, and Ezer, the father of Husha. These are the sons of Hur, the firstborn of Ephrata, the father of Bethlehem. And Asher, the father of Tekoa, had two wives, Elah and Neirah. And Neirah bare him Ahuzam, and Hepha, and Temanai, and Heah Hashterai. These were the sons of Neirah. And the sons of Hela were Zereth, and Jezoar, and Ethnan. And Kaz begat Anab, and Zobiba, and the families of Aharhel, the son of Haram. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren, and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with sorrow. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, O that thou wouldest bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, and that thine hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. And Kelob, the brother of Shua, begat Meher, which was the father of Eshton. And Eshton begat Bethrepha, and Pasea, and Tehinnah, the father of Ernehash. These are the men of Rika. And the sons of Kenaz, Othniel and Sariah, and the sons of Othniel, Hathath. And Maonothai begat Ophrah, and Sariah begat Joab, the father of the valley of Karashim, for they were craftsmen. And the sons of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, Iru, Elah, and Naam. And the sons of Elah, even Kenaz. And the sons of Jehalalil, Ziph, and Zipha, Tyria, and Asareel. And the sons of Ezra were Jether, and Mered, and Ephah, and Jalon. And she bare Miriam, Shammai and Ishba, the father of Eshtemoa. And his wife, Jehudijah, bare Jered, the father of Gedor, and Heber, the father of Soko, and Jekuthiel, the father of Zanoah. And these are the sons of Bithia, the daughter of Pharaoh, which Mered took. And the sons of his wife, Hodiah, the sister of Nahum, the father of Keilah, the Garmite, and Eshtemoa, the Maacathite. And the sons of Shimon were Amnon and Rinna, Ben-Hanan and Tylon. And the sons of Ishai were Zoheth and Ben Zoheth. The sons of Shelah, the son of Judah, were Ur, the father of Lecha, and Laadah, the father of Marisha, and the families of the house of them that wrought fine linen of the house of Ashbeah, 
and Jochim and the men of Koziba and Joash and Seraph, who had the dominion in Moab, and Jashu by Lehim. And these are ancient things. These were the potters and those that dwelt among plants and hedges. There they dwelt with the king for his work. The sons of Simeon were Nemuel and Jamin, Jareb, Zira, and Sheol. Shalom his son, Mibsam his son, Mishma his son. And the sons of Mishma, Amuel his son, Zachar his son, Shimei his son. And Shimei had sixteen sons and six daughters, but his brethren had not many children, neither did all their family multiply like to the children of Judah. And they dwelt at Beersheba, and Moleda, and Hazar Shuel, and at Bilha, and at Ezem, and at Tolad, and at Bethuel, and at Horma, and at Ziklag, and at Beth Markaboth, and Hazar Susim, and at Beth Berei, and at Shearaim. These were their cities unto the reign of David. And their villages were Etam, and Ayan, Rimon, and Token, and Ashan, five cities. And all their villages that were round about the same cities unto Baal. These were their habitations and their genealogy. And Meshobab, and Jamlech, and Josha, the son of Amaziah, and Joel, and Jehu, the son of Josabiah, the son of Sariah, the son of Asiel, and Elioenai, and Jeacoba, and Jeshohiah, and Asiah, and Adiel, and Jesimiel, and Benaiah, and Ziza, the son of Shiphai, the son of Alan, the son of Jediah, the son of Shimri, the son of Shemaiah. These mentioned by their names were princes in their families, and the house of their fathers increased greatly. And they went to the entrance of Gedor, even unto the east side of the valley, to seek pasture for their flocks. And they found fat pasture and good, and the land was wide and quiet and peaceable, for they of Ham had dwelt there of old. And these written by name came in the days of Hezekiah king of Judah, and smote their tents and the habitations that were found there, and destroyed them utterly unto this day, and dwelt in their rooms, because there was pasture there for their flocks. And some of them, even of the sons of Simeon, five hundred men, went to Mount Seir, having for their captains Pelatiah, and Neariah, and Rephiah, and Uzziel, the sons of Ishai. And they smote the rest of the Amalekites that were escaped, and dwelt there unto this day. Chapter 5 Now the sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, for he was the firstborn, but for as much as he defiled his father's bed, his birthright was given unto the sons of Joseph, the son of Israel. And the genealogy is not to be reckoned after the birthright, for Judah prevailed above his brethren, and of him came the chief ruler. But the birthright was Joseph's. The sons, I say, of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, were Hanok and Palu, Hezron and Carmi. The sons of Joel, Shemaiah his son, Gog his son, Shimei his son, Micah his son, Reiah his son, Baal his son, Bera his son, whom Tilgath Pilnezer, king of Assyria, carried away captive. He was prince of the Reubenites. And his brethren by their families, when the genealogy of their generations was reckoned, were the chief, Jeiel and Zechariah, and Bela the son of Azaz, the son of Shema, the son of Joel, who dwelt in Aroah, even unto Nebo and baal Meon. And eastward he inhabited unto the entering in of the wilderness from the river Euphrates, because their cattle were multiplied in the land of Gilead. And in the days of Saul they made war with the Hagarites, who fell by their hand, and they dwelt in their tents throughout all the east land of Gilead. And the children of Gad dwelt over against them in the land of Bashan unto Salca, Joel the chief, and Shaphan the next, and Jaanai and Shaphat in Bashan. And their brethren of the house of their fathers were Michael, and Meshalem, and Sheba, and Jorai, and Jachin, and Ziah, and Heber, seven. These are the children of Abihail, the son of Hurai, the son of Jeroah, the son of Gilead, the son of Michael, the son of Jeshishai, the son of Jado, the son of Buzz. Ahai, the son of Abdil, the son of Unai, chief of the house of their fathers. And they dwelt in Gilead, in Bashan, and in her towns, and in all the suburbs of Sharon, upon their borders. All these were reckoned by genealogies in the days of Jotham, king of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, king of Israel. The sons of Reuben and the Gadites, and half the tribe of Manasseh, of valiant men, men able to bear buckler and sword, and to shoot with bow, and skillful in war, were four and forty thousand seven hundred and threescore that went out to the war. And they made war with the Hagarites, with Jeter and Nephish and Nodab. And they were helped against them, and the Hagarites were delivered into their hand, and all that were with them. For they cried to God in the battle, and he was entreated of them, because they put their trust in him. And they took away their cattle, of their camels fifty thousand, and of sheep two hundred and fifty thousand, and of asses two thousand, and of men an hundred thousand. For there fell down many slain, because the war was of God. And they dwelt in their steads until the captivity. 
And the children of the half-tribe of Manasseh dwelt in the land. They increased from Bashan unto Baal Hermon and Sinah, and unto Mount Hermon. And these were the heads of the house of their fathers, even Ephah, and Ishai, and Eliel, and Azrael, and Jeremiah, and Hodaviah, and Jadiel, mighty men of valor, famous men, and heads of the house of their fathers. And they transgressed against the God of their fathers, and went a hoarding after the gods of the people of the land whom God destroyed before them. And the God of Israel stirred up the spirit of Paul, king of Assyria, and the spirit of Tilgath Pilneser, king of Assyria, and he carried them away, even the Reubenites and the Gadites and the half-tribe of Manasseh, and brought them unto Hala and Habor and Hera and to the river Gozan unto this day. Chapter 6 The sons of Levi, Gershon, Kohath, and Merari, and the sons of Kohath, Amram, Izhar, and Hebron, and Uzziel, and the children of Amram, Aaron, and Moses, and Miriam, the sons also of Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, Eleazar and Ithamar. Eleazar begat Phinehas, Phinehas begat Abishua, and Abishua begat Bacchae, and Bacchae begat Uzai, and Uzai begat Zerahiah, and Zerahiah begat Merioth. Merioth begat Amariah, and Amariah begat Ahitab, and Ahitab begat Zadok, and Zadok begat Ahimaaz, and Ahimaaz begat Azariah, and Azariah begat Johanan, and Johanan begat Azariah. He it is that executed the priest's office in the temple that Solomon built in Jerusalem. And Azariah begat Amariah, and Amariah begat Ahitab, and Ahitab begat Zadok, and Zadok begat Shalom, and Shalom begat Hilkiah, and Hilkiah begat Azariah, and Azariah begat Siriah, and Siriah begat Jehozadak. And Jehozadak went into captivity when the Lord carried away Judah and Jerusalem by the hand of Nebuchadnezzar. The sons of Levi, Gershom, Kohath, and Merari. And these be the names of the sons of Gershom, Libni and Shimei. And the sons of Kohath were Amram and Izhar and Hebron and Uzziel. The sons of Merari, Malai and Mushai. And these are the families of the Levites according to their fathers. Of Gershom, Libni his son, Jahath his son, Zimmah his son, Joah his son, Iddo his son, Zerah his son, Jeatari his son. The sons of Kohath, Aminadab his son, Korah his son, Aser his son, Elkanah his son, and Abiasaph his son, and Aser his son. Tehath his son, Uriel his son, Uzziah his son, and Sheol his son. And the sons of Elkanah, Amasai and Ahimoth. As for Elkanah, the sons of Elkanah, Zophai his son, and Nahath his son, Eliab his son, Jeroham his son, Elkanah his son. And the sons of Samuel, the firstborn, Bashnai and Abiah. The sons of Merari, Malai, Libni his son, Shimei his son, Uzzah his son, Shimei his son, Agiah his son, Asiah his son. And these are they whom David set over the service of song in the house of the Lord after that the ark had rest. And they ministered before the dwelling place of the tabernacle of the congregation with singing until Solomon had built the house of the Lord in Jerusalem. And then they waited on their office according to their order. And these are they that waited with their children. Of the sons of the Kohathites, Heman, a singer, the son of Joel, the son of Shemuel, the son of Elkanah, the son of Jeroham, the son of Eliel, the son of Toa, the son of Zaph, the son of Elkanah, the son of Mahath, the son of Amasai, the son of Elkanah, the son of Joel, the son of Azariah, the son of Zephaniah, the son of Tehath, the son of Aser, the son of Ibiaseth, the son of Korah, the son of Izhar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, the son of Israel. And his brother Asaph, who stood on his right hand, even Asaph, the son of Berechiah, the son of Shimea, the son of Michael, the son of Baasiah, the son of Malchiah, the son of Ethmai, the son of Zerah, the son of Adiah, the son of Ethan, the son of Zima, the son of Shimei, the son of Jahath, the son of Gershom, the son of Levi. And their brethren, the sons of Merari, stood on the left hand, Ethan, the son of Kishai, the son of Abdi, the son of Malak, the son of Hashabiah, the son of Amaziah, the son of Hilkiah, the son of Amzai, the son of Bani, the son of Shamer, the son of Marli, the son of Mushai, the son of Merari, the son of Levi. Their brethren also the Levites were appointed unto all manner of service of the tabernacle of the house of God. But Aaron and his sons offered upon the altar of the burnt offering and on the altar of incense, and were appointed for all the work of the place most holy to make an atonement for Israel according to all that Moses the servant of God had commanded. And these are the sons of Aaron, Eleazar his son, Phinehas his son, Abishua his son, Bacchae his son, Uzai his son, Zerahiah his son, Merioth his son, Amariah his son, Ahitab his son, Zadok his son, Ahimaaz his son. Now these are their dwelling places throughout their castles in their coasts of the sons of Aaron, of the families of the Kohathites, for theirs was the lot. And they gave them Hebron in the land of Judah, and the suburbs thereof round about it. 
but the fields of the city and the villages thereof they gave to Caleb the son of Jephunneh. And to the sons of Aaron they gave the cities of Judah, namely Hebron the city of refuge, and Libna with her suburbs, and Jatta and Eshtemoa with their suburbs, and Hyland with her suburbs, Deber with her suburbs, and Ashan with her suburbs, and Beth Shemesh with her suburbs. And out of the tribe of Benjamin, Geber with her suburbs, and Alameth with her suburbs, and Anathoth with her suburbs. All their cities throughout their families were thirteen cities. And unto the sons of Kohath, which were left of the family of that tribe, were cities given out of the half-tribe, namely out of the half-tribe of Manasseh, by lot ten cities. And to the sons of Gershom, throughout their families, out of the tribe of Issachar, and out of the tribe of Asher, and out of the tribe of Naphtali, and out of the tribe of Manasseh and Bashan, thirteen cities. And to the sons of Merari were given by lot throughout their families out of the tribe of Reuben and out of the tribe of Gad and out of the tribe of Zebulun twelve cities. And the children of Israel gave to the Levites these cities with their suburbs. And they gave by lot out of the tribe of the children of Judah and out of the tribe of the children of Simeon and out of the tribe of the children of Benjamin these cities which are called by their names. And the residue of the families of the sons of Kohath had cities of their coasts out of the tribe of Ephraim. And they gave unto them of the cities of refuge Shechem in Mount Ephraim with her suburbs. They gave also Gezer with her suburbs, and Jochmiam with her suburbs, and Beth Horon with her suburbs, and Ijalon with her suburbs, and Gat Rimmon with her suburbs. And out of the half tribe of Manasseh, Aner with her suburbs, and Bileam with her suburbs, of the family of the remnant of the sons of Kohath. Unto the sons of Gershom were given out of the family of the half tribe of Manasseh Golan in Bashan with her suburbs, and Ashtaroth with her suburbs, and out of the tribe of Issachar, Kedesh with her suburbs, Dabarath with her suburbs, and Ramoth with her suburbs, and Anam with her suburbs. And out of the tribe of Asher, Meshal with her suburbs, and Abdon with her suburbs, and Hukok with her suburbs, and Rehob with her suburbs. And out of the tribe of Naphtali, Kedesh in Galilee with her suburbs, and Hammon with her suburbs, and Kirjathaim with her suburbs. Unto the rest of the children of Merari were given out of the tribe of Zebulun, Rimon with her suburbs, Tabor with her suburbs. And on the other side, Jordan by Jericho, on the east side of Jordan, were given them out of the tribe of Reuben, Bezer in the wilderness with her suburbs, and Jaza with her suburbs, Kedemoth also with her suburbs, and Mephaath with her suburbs. And out of the tribe of Gad, Ramoth and Gilead with her suburbs, and Mahanaim with her suburbs, and Heshbon with her suburbs, and Jazer with her suburbs. Chapter 7 Now the sons of Issachar were Tola and Pua, Jashub and Shimron, four. And the sons of Tola, Azai and Rephiah and Jeriel and Jamei and Jibsam and Shemuel, heads of their father's house, to wit of Tola. They were valiant men of might in their generations, whose number was in the days of David two and twenty thousand and six hundred. And the sons of Azai, Israhiah, and the sons of Israhiah, Michael and Obadiah and Joel, Ishiah, five, all of them chief men. And with them, by their generations, after the house of their fathers, were bands of soldiers for war, six and thirty thousand men, for they had many wives and sons. And their brethren among all the families of Issachar were valiant men of might, reckoned in all by their genealogies fourscore and seven thousand. The sons of Benjamin, Bela and Beker and Jediel, three. And the sons of Bela, Esbon and Uzai and Uzziel and Jeremoth and Irai, five, heads of the house of their fathers, mighty men of valor and were reckoned by their genealogies twenty and two thousand and thirty and four. And the sons of Beker, Zemira and Joash, and Eliezer, and Elioenai, and Omri, and Jeremoth, and Abiah, and Anathoth, and Alameth. All these are the sons of Beker, and the number of them, after their genealogy by their generations, heads of the house of their fathers, mighty men of valor, was twenty thousand and two hundred. The sons also of Jediel, Bilhan, and the sons of Bilhan, Jeash, and Benjamin, and Ehud, and Kenayana, and Zethan, and Tharshish, and Ahishayar. All these, the sons of Jediel, by the heads of their fathers, mighty men of valor, were seventeen thousand and two hundred soldiers fit to go out for war and battle. Shapim also, and Hapim, the children of Ur, and Hushim, the sons of Ahur. The sons of Naphtali, Jaziel, and Gunai, and Jezer, and Shalom, the sons of Bilhah. The sons of Manasseh, Ashriel, whom she bare, but his concubine, the Aramitus, bare Maker, the father of Gilead. And Maker took to wife the sister of Hapim and Shapim, whose sister's name was Maacah. And the name of the second was Zelophehad, and Zelophehad had daughters. And Maacah, the wife of Maker, bare a son, and she called his name Piresh, and the name of his brother was Shiresh, 
and his sons were Ulam and Rakam, and the sons of Ulam, Bedan. These were the sons of Gilead, the son of Maker, the son of Manasseh. And his sister Hamoleketh bare Aishad and Abiezer and Mahala. And the sons of Shemida were Ahian and Shechem and Lichai and Aniam. And the sons of Ephraim, Shuthila and Bevid his son, and Tehath his son, and Elada his son, and Tehath his son. And Zabad his son, and Shuthila his son, and Ezer, and Eliad, whom the men of Gath that were born in that land slew, because they came down to take away their cattle. And Ephraim their father mourned many days, and his brethren came to comfort him. And when he went in to his wife, she conceived and bare a son, and he called his name Beriah, because it went evil with his house. And his daughter was Shira, who built Beth Hor on the nether and the upper, and Uzan Shira. And Repha was his son, also Reshef, and Tila his son, and Tehan his son, Laodan his son, Amihad his son, Elishama his son, Non his son, Jehoshua his son. And their possessions and habitations were Bethel and the towns thereof, and eastward Naaran, and westward Gezer with the towns thereof. She came also in the towns thereof unto Geza and the towns thereof. And by the borders of the children of Manasseh, Bethshean and her towns, Hayanak and her towns, Megiddo and her towns, Dor and her towns. In these dwelt the children of Joseph, the son of Israel. The sons of Asher, Imna and Ishua and Ishuai and Beriah and Sira, their sister. And the sons of Beriah, Heber and Malkiel, who was the father of Berzavith. And Heber begat Japhlet and Shomer and Hotham and Shua, their sister. And the sons of Japhlet, Pesach and Bimhal and Ashvath. These are the children of Japhlet. And the sons of Shema, Ahai and Roga, Jehaba and Aram. And the sons of his brother Helam, Zopha and Imna and Shelesh and Amal. The sons of Zopha, Shua and Harnifer and Shual and Birai and Imra. Bezer and Had and Shema and Shilsha and Ithran and Bera. And the sons of Jetha, Jephani and Pispa and Era. And the sons of Allah, Hera and Haniel and Rezia. All these were the children of Asher, heads of their father's house, choice and mighty men of valor, chief of the princes. And the number throughout the genealogy of them that were apt to the war and to battle was twenty and six thousand men. Chapter 8 Now Benjamin begat Bela his firstborn, Ashbel the second, and Ahera the third, Noah the fourth, and Rapha the fifth. And the sons of Bela were Adar and Gera and Abihud and Abishua and Naaman and Ahoah, and Gera, and Shephufan, and Shuram. And these are the sons of Ehud. These are the heads of the fathers of the inhabitants of Geba. And they removed them to Manahath. And Naaman, and Ahiah, and Gera, he removed them, and begat Uzzah, and Ahihud. And Shehareim begat children in the country of Moab, after he had sent them away. Hushim and Beera were his wives. And he begat of Hodesh his wife, Zobab, and Zibia, and Misha, and Malcolm, and Jeaz, and Shakiah, and Mirma. These were his sons, heads of the fathers. And of Hushim he begat Abitab and Elpeo. The sons of Elpeo, Eber and Mishim and Shemed, who built Ono and Lod with the towns thereof. Beriah also and Shema, who were heads of the fathers of the inhabitants of Aijalon, who drove away the inhabitants of Gath. And Ahio, Sheshach, and Jeremoth. And Zebediah, and Arad, and Ada, and Michael, and Dispa, and Joha, the sons of Beriah. And Zebediah and Meshullam, and Hezekiah, and Heber, Ishmerai also, and Jezliah, and Jobab, the sons of Elpeo, and Jachin, and Zikri, and Zabdi, and Elienai, and Zilphi, and Eliel, and Adiah, and Beriah, and Shimrath, the sons of Shimhai, and Ishpan, and Heber, and Eliel, and Abdon, and Zikri, and Hanan, and Hananiah, and Elam, and Antothijah, and Iphidiah, and Penuel, the sons of Sheshach, and Shamshirai, and Shehariah, and Athaliah, and Jerusiah, and Eliah, and Zikri, the sons of Jeroham. These were the heads of the fathers by their generations, chief men. These dwelt in Jerusalem. And at Gibeon dwelt the father of Gibeon, whose wife's name was Maacah, and his firstborn son Abdon, and Zer, and Kish, and Baal, and Nadab, and Gedor, and Ahio, and Zacher. And Mikloth begat Shimeah, and these also dwelt with their brethren in Jerusalem over against them. And Ner begat Kish, and Kish begat Saul, and Saul begat Jonathan, and Malchashua, and Abinadab, and Eshbaal. And the son of Jonathan was Meribaal, and Meribaal begat Micah. 
and the sons of Micah were Python and Melech and Teria and Ahaz. And Ahaz begat Jehoiada, and Jehoiada begat Alameth, and Asmaveth, and Zimri. And Zimri begat Moza, and Moza begat Binia. Rapha was his son, Eliasa his son, Hazel his son. And Hazel had six sons, whose names are these, Azrikam, Bokaru, and Ishmael, and Sheariah, and Obadiah, and Hanan. All these were the sons of Hazel. And the sons of Eshek, his brother, were Ulam, his firstborn, Jehush, the second, and Eliphalet, the third. And the sons of Ulam were mighty men of valor, archers, and had many sons and sons' sons, an hundred and fifty. All these are of the sons of Benjamin. Chapter 9 So all Israel were reckoned by genealogies. And behold, they were written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah, who were carried away to Babylon for their transgression. Now the first inhabitants that dwelt in their possessions in their cities were the Israelites, the priests, Levites, and the Nephinim. And in Jerusalem dwelt of the children of Judah, and of the children of Benjamin, and of the children of Ephraim and Manasseh, Uthai the son of Amahad, the son of Amri, the son of Imri, the son of Bani, of the children of Pharez, the son of Judah. And of the Shilonites, Asiah the firstborn and his sons. And of the sons of Zerah, Jewel and their brethren, six hundred and ninety. And of the sons of Benjamin, Salu the son of Mishalem, the son of Hodabiah, the son of Hassanua, and Ibniah the son of Jeroham, and Elah the son of Azai, the son of Mikri, and Mishalem the son of Shephathiah, the son of Ruel, the son of Ibnijah, and their brethren according to their generations, nine hundred and fifty and six. All these men were chief of the fathers in the house of their fathers. And of the priests, Jediah and Jehoiarib and Jachin, and Azariah the son of Hilkiah, the son of Mishalem, the son of Zadok, the son of Meriah, the son of Ahitam, the ruler of the house of God. And Adiah the son of Jeroham, the son of Pasha, the son of Melchijah, and Maasiai, the son of Adiel, the son of Jazerah, the son of Mishalem, the son of Mishilamith, the son of Immer, and their brethren, heads of the house of their fathers, a thousand and seven hundred and threescore, very able men for the work of the service of the house of God. And of the Levites, Shemaiah, the son of Hashab, the son of Azraikim, the son of Hashabiah, of the sons of Merari, and Bakbakah, Heresh, and Galau, and Mataniah, the son of Micah, the son of Zikri, the son of Asaph, and Obadiah, the son of Shemaiah, the son of Galau, the son of Jeduthun, and Berechiah, the son of Asa, the son of Elkanah, that dwelt in the villages of the Netophathites. And the porters were Shalom, and Akab, and Talman, and Ahiman, and their brethren. Shalom was the chief, who hitherto waited in the king's gate eastward. They were porters in the companies of the children of Levi. And Shalom, the son of Kori, the son of Ebiasaph, the son of Korah, and his brethren of the house of his father, the Korahites, were over the work of the service, keepers of the gates of the tabernacle. And their fathers, being over the host of the Lord, were keepers of the entry. And Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, was the ruler over them in time past, and the Lord was with him. And Zechariah the son of Meshanamiah was porter of the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. All these which were chosen to be porters in the gates were two hundred and twelve. These were reckoned by their genealogy in their villages, whom David and Samuel the seer did ordain in their set office. So they and their children had the oversight of the gates of the house of the Lord, namely the house of the tabernacle, by wards. In four quarters were the porters, toward the east, west, north, and south. And their brethren, which were in their villages, were to come after seven days from time to time with them. For these Levites, the four chief porters, were in their set office, and were over the chambers and treasuries of the house of God. And they lodged round about the house of God, because the charge was upon them, and the opening thereof every morning pertained to them. And certain of them had the charge of the ministering vessels, that they should bring them in and out by tail. Some of them also were appointed to oversee the vessels, and all the instruments of the sanctuary, and the fine flour, and the wine, and the oil, and the frankincense and the spices. And some of the sons of the priests made the ointment of the spices. And Mattathiah, one of the Levites, who was the firstborn of Shalom the Korahite, had the set office over the things that were made in the pans. And other of their brethren, of the sons of the Kohathites, were over the showbread to prepare it every Sabbath. And these are the singers, chief of the fathers of the Levites, who remaining in the chambers were free, for they were employed in that work day and night. These chief fathers of the Levites were chief throughout their generations. These dwelt at Jerusalem. And in Gibeon dwelt the father of Gibeon, Jehiel, whose wife's name was Maacah. And his firstborn son, Abdon, then Zer, and Kish, and Baal, and Ner, and Nadab, and Gedor, and Ahio, and Zechariah, and Mikloth. And Mikloth begat Shimeon. 
and they also dwelt with their brethren at Jerusalem over against their brethren. And Ner begat Kish, and Kish begat Saul, and Saul begat Jonathan, and Malchishua, and Abinadab, and Eshbaal. And the son of Jonathan was Meribbaal, and Meribbaal begat Micah. And the sons of Micah were Python, and Melech, and Taria, and Ahaz. And Ahaz begat Jera, and Jera begat Alameth, and Asmaveth, and Zimri, and Zimri begat Moza. And Moza begat Binea, and Rephiah his son, Eliasa his son, Azel his son. And Azel had six sons, whose names are these, Hazrakim, Bokaru, and Ishmael, and Sheariah, and Obadiah, and Hanan. These were the sons of Azel. Chapter 10 now the Philistines fought against Israel, and the men of Israel fled from before the Philistines and fell down slain in Mount Gilboa. And the Philistines followed hard after Saul and after his sons, and the Philistines slew Jonathan and Abinadab and Malchishua the sons of Saul. And the battle went sore against Saul, and the archers hit him, and he was wounded of the archers. Then said Saul to his armor-bearer, Draw thy sword and thrust me through therewith, lest these uncircumcised had come and abuse me. But his armor-bearer would not for he was sore afraid. So Saul took a sword and fell upon it. And when his armor-bearer saw that Saul was dead, he fell likewise on the sword and died. So Saul died, and his three sons, and all his house died together. And when all the men of Israel that were in the valley saw that they fled, and that Saul and his sons were dead, then they forsook their cities and fled. And the Philistines came and dwelt in them. And it came to pass on the morrow, when the Philistines came to strip the slain, that they found Saul and his sons fallen in Mount Gilboa. And when they had stripped him, they took his head and his armor, and sent into the land of the Philistines round about, to carry tidings unto their idols and to the people. And they put his armor in the house of their gods, and fastened his head in the temple of Dagon. And when all Jabesh Gilead heard all that the Philistines had done to Saul, they arose, all the valiant men, and took away the body of Saul and the bodies of his sons, and brought them to Jabesh, and buried their bones under the oak in Jabesh, and fasted seven days. So Saul died for his transgression which he committed against the Lord, even against the word of the Lord which he kept not, and also for asking counsel of one that had a familiar spirit to inquire of it, and inquired not of the Lord. Therefore, he slew him and turned the kingdom unto David, the son of Jesse. Chapter 11 Then all Israel gathered themselves to David unto Hebron, saying, Behold, we are thy bone and thy flesh. And moreover, in time past, even when Saul was king, thou wast he that leddest out and broughtest in Israel. And the Lord thy God said unto thee, Thou shalt feed my people Israel, and thou shalt be ruler over my people Israel. Therefore came all the elders of Israel to the king to Hebron, and David made a covenant with them in Hebron before the Lord. And they anointed David king over Israel, according to the word of the Lord by Samuel. And David and all Israel went to Jerusalem, which is Jebus, where the Jebusites were, the inhabitants of the land. And the inhabitants of Jebus said to David, Thou shalt not come hither. Nevertheless, David took the castle of Zion, which is the city of David. And David said, Whosoever smiteth the Jebusites first shall be chief and captain. So Joab, the son of Zeruiah, went first up and was chief. And David dwelt in the castle, therefore they called it the city of David. And he built the city round about, even from Milo round about. And Joab repaired the rest of the city. So David waxed greater and greater, for the Lord of hosts was with him. These also are the chief of the mighty men whom David had, who strengthened themselves with him in his kingdom and with all Israel, to make him king according to the word of the Lord concerning Israel. And this is the number of the mighty men whom David had. Jeshobim and Hakmonite, the chief of the captains. He lifted up his spear against three hundred, slain by him at one time. And after him was Eleazar, the son of Dodo, the Ahohite, who was one of the three mighties. He was with David at Pasdamim, and there the Philistines were gathered together to battle, where was a parcel of ground full of barley, and the people fled from before the Philistines. And they set themselves in the midst of that parcel, and delivered it, and slew the Philistines. And the Lord saved them by a great deliverance. Now three of the thirty captains went down to the rock to David, into the cave of Adullam. And the host of the Philistines encamped in the valley of Rephaim. And David was then in the hold, and the Philistines' garrison was then at Bethlehem. And David longed, and said, Oh, that one would give me drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem that is at the gate. And the three, 
brake through the host of the Philistines and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate and took it and brought it to David. But David would not drink of it, but poured it out to the Lord and said, My God forbid it me that I should do this thing. Shall I drink the blood of these men that have put their lives in jeopardy? For with the jeopardy of their lives they brought it. Therefore he would not drink it. These things did these three mightiest. And Abishai, the brother of Joab, he was chief of the three. For lifting up his spear against three hundred, he slew them and had a name among the three. Of the three, he was more honorable than the two, for he was their captain, albeit he attained not to the first three. Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, the son of a valiant man of Kabzeel, who had done many acts. He slew two lion-like men of Moab. Also he went down and slew a lion in a pit in a snowy day. And he slew an Egyptian, a man of great stature, five cubits high, and in the Egyptian's hand was a spear like a weaver's beam. And he went down to him with a staff, and plucked the spear out of the Egyptian's hand, and slew him with his own spear. These things did Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, and had the name among the three mighties. Behold, he was honorable among the thirty, but attained not to the first three. And David set him over his God. Also the valiant men of the armies were Asahel, the brother of Joab, Elhanan, the son of Dodo of Bethlehem, Shamoth, the Herorite, Helez, the Pelonite, Ira, the son of Ikesh, the Tekoite, Abiezer, the Antrothite, Sibekai, the Hushathite, Ilei, the Ahohite, Meherai, the Netophathite, Heled, the son of Baana, the Netophathite, Ithai, the son of Ribai, of Gibeah, that pertained to the children of Benjamin, Benaiah, the Pirathonite, Hurei, of the brooks of Gaash, Abiel, the Arbathite, Asnabeth the Beharumite, Eliaba the Shealbonite, the sons of Hashem the Geizonite, Jonathan the son of Shagi the Herodite, Ahayan the son of Sekar the Herodite, Elipho the son of Ur, Hefer the Mekirathite, Ahijah the Pelonite, Hezra the Carmelite, Neari the son of Ezbi, Joel the brother of Nathan, Mibhar the son of Hagirai, Zelek the Ammonite, Neharai the Beerothite, the armor bearer of Joab the son of Zeruiah, Ira the Ithrite, Ger of the Ithrite, Uriah the Hittite, Zabad the son of Arlai, Adinah the son of Shiza the Reubenite, a captain of the Reubenites, and thirty with him, Hanan the son of Maacah, and Joshaphat the Mithnite, Aziah the Ashtirathite, Shema and Jehiel the sons of Hothan the Aroarite, Jediel the son of Shimrai, and Joha his brother the Tizite, Eliel the Mahavite, and Jerubai and Joshabiah the sons of Elnaim, and Ithma the Moabite, Eliel and Obed, and Jassiel the Messabeite. Chapter 12 Now these are they that came to David to Ziklag, while he yet kept himself close because of Saul the son of Kish. And they were among the mighty men, helpers of the war. They were armed with bows, and could use both the right hand and the left in hurling stones and shooting arrows out of a bow, even of Saul's brethren of Benjamin. The chief was Ahiezer, then Joash, the sons of Shemaah the Kibiathite, and Jeziel, and Pelet, the sons of Asmaveth, and Bereka, and Jehu the Antothite, and Ismaiah the Gibeonite, a mighty man among the thirty and over the thirty, and Jeremiah, and Jehaziel, and Johanan, and Josabad the Gadirathite, Eluzai, and Jeremoth, and Bealiah, and Shemariah, and Shephatiah the Harufite, Elkanah, and Jesiah, and Azareel, and Joeza, and Jeshabim the Korhites, and Joela, and Zebediah the sons of Jeroham of Gedor. And of the Gadites there separated themselves unto David into the hold, to the wilderness, men of might, and men of war, fit for the battle, that could handle shield and buckler, whose faces were like the faces of lions, and were as swift as the rose upon the mountains. Ezer the first, Obadiah the second, Eliab the third, Mishmana the fourth, Jeremiah the fifth, Atei the sixth, Eliel the seventh, Johanan the eighth, Elzabad the ninth, Jeremiah the tenth, Macbani the eleventh. These were of the sons of Gad, captains of the host. One of the least was over an hundred, and the greatest over a thousand. These are they that went over Jordan in the first month when it had overflown all his banks, and they put to flight all them of the valleys, both toward the east and toward the west. And there came of the children of Benjamin and Judah to the hold unto David. And David went out to meet them, and answered and said unto them, If ye be come peaceably unto me to help me, mine heart shall be knit unto you. But if ye be come to betray me to mine enemies, seeing there is no wrong in mine hands, the God of our fathers look thereon and rebuke it. Then the Spirit came upon Amasai, who was chief of the captains, and he said, Thine are we, David, and on thy side, thou son of Jesse. Peace, peace be unto thee, and peace be to thine helpers, for thy God helpeth thee. Then David received them, 
and made them captains of the band. And there fell some of Manasseh to David when he came with the Philistines against Saul to battle. But they helped them not, for the lords of the Philistines upon advisement sent him away, saying, He will fall to his master Saul to the jeopardy of our heads. As he went to Ziklag, there fell to him of Manasseh, Adna and Josabad, and Jediel, and Michael, and Josabad, and Elihu, and Zilthi, captains of the thousands that were of Manasseh. And they helped David against the band of the rovers, for they were all mighty men of valor, and were captains in the host. For at that time, day by day, there came to David to help him, until it was a great host, like the host of God. And these are the numbers of the bands that were ready armed to the war, and came to David to Hebron, to turn the kingdom of Saul to him, according to the word of the Lord. The children of Judah that bear shield and spear were six thousand and eight hundred, ready armed to the war. Of the children of Simeon, mighty men of valor for the war, seven thousand and one hundred. Of the children of Levi, four thousand and six hundred. And Jehoiada was the leader of the Aaronites, and with him were three thousand and seven hundred. And Zadok, a young man mighty of valor, and of his father's house twenty and two captains. And of the children of Benjamin, the kindred of Saul, three thousand, for hitherto the greatest part of them had kept the ward of the house of Saul. And of the children of Ephraim, twenty thousand and eight hundred, mighty men of valor, famous throughout the house of their fathers. And of the half-tribe of Manasseh, eighteen thousand, which were expressed by name to come and make David king. And of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do, the heads of them were two hundred, and all their brethren were at their commandment. Of Zebulun, such as went forth to battle, expert in war, with all instruments of war, fifty thousand, which could keep rank. They were not of double heart. And of Naphtali a thousand captains, and with them with shield and spear thirty and seven thousand. And of the Danites, expert in war, twenty and eight thousand and six hundred. And of Asher, such as went forth to battle, expert in war, forty thousand. And on the other side of Jordan, of the Reubenites and the Gadites, and of the half-tribe of Manasseh, with all manner of instruments of war for the battle, an hundred and twenty thousand. All these men of war that could keep rank came with a perfect heart to Hebron to make David king over all Israel. And all the rest also of Israel were of one heart to make David king. And there they were with David three days, eating and drinking, for their brethren had prepared for them. Moreover, they that were nigh them, even unto Issachar and Zebulun and Naphtali, brought bread on asses and on camels and on mules and on oxen, and meat, meal, cakes of figs and bunches of raisins, and wine and oil and oxen and sheep abundantly. For there was joy in Israel. Chapter 13 and David consulted with the captains of thousands and hundreds, and with every leader. And David said unto all the congregation of Israel, If it seem good unto you, and that it be of the Lord our God, let us send abroad unto our brethren everywhere that are left in all the land of Israel, and with them also to the priests and Levites which are in their cities and suburbs, that they may gather themselves unto us. And let us bring again the ark of our God to us, for we inquired not at it in the days of Saul. And all the congregation said that they would do so for the thing was right in the eyes of all the people. So David gathered all Israel together from Shihor of Egypt, even unto the entering of Hemath, to bring the ark of God from kirjath Jearim. And David went up, and all Israel, to Baalah, that is, to kirjath Jearim, which belonged to Judah, to bring up thence the ark of God the Lord, that dwelleth between the cherubims, whose name is called on it. And they carried the ark of God in a new cart out of the house of Abinadab, and Uzzah and Ahio drave the cart. And David and all Israel played before God with all their might, and with singing, and with harps, and with psalteries, and with timbrels, and with cymbals, and with trumpets. And when they came unto the threshing floor of Kidon, Uzzah put forth his hand to hold the ark, for the oxen stumbled. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah, and he smote him, because he put his hand to the ark. And there he died before God. And David was displeased, because the Lord had made a breach upon Uzzah. Wherefore that place is called Perez Uzzah to this day. And David was afraid of God that day, saying, How shall I bring the ark of God home to me? So David brought not the ark home to himself to the city of David, but carried it aside into the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite. And the ark of God remained with the family of Obed-Edom in his house three months. And the Lord blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that he had. Chapter 14 now Hiram king of Tyre sent messengers to David, and timber of cedars, with masons and carpenters, to build him a house. And David perceived that the Lord had confirmed him king over Israel, for his kingdom was lifted up on high because of his people Israel. And David took more wives at Jerusalem, and David begat more sons and daughters. 
Now these are the names of his children which he had in Jerusalem, Shammua and Shobab, Nathan and Solomon, and Ibhar and Elishua and Elphalet, and Noga and Nepheg and Japhia and Elishama and Beliada and Eliphalet. And when the Philistines heard that David was anointed king over all Israel, all the Philistines went up to seek David. And David heard of it and went out against them. And the Philistines came and spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim. And David inquired of God, saying, Shall I go up against the Philistines, and wilt thou deliver them into mine hand? And the Lord said unto him, Go up, for I will deliver them into thine hand. So they came up to baal Perazim, and David smote them there. Then David said, God hath broken in upon mine enemies by mine hand, like the breaking forth of waters. Therefore they called the name of that place baal Perazim. And when they had left their gods there, David gave a commandment, and they were burned with fire. And the Philistines yet again spread themselves abroad in the valley. Therefore David inquired again of God, and God said unto him, Go not up after them, turn away from them, and come upon them over against the mulberry trees. And it shall be when thou shalt hear a sound of going in the tops of the mulberry trees, that then thou shalt go out to battle. For God is gone forth before thee to smite the host of the Philistines. David therefore did as God commanded him, and they smote the host of the Philistines from Gibeon even to Gezer. And the fame of David went out into all lands, and the Lord brought the fear of him upon all nations. Chapter 15 And David made him houses in the city of David, and prepared a place for the ark of God, and pitched for it a tent. Then David said, None ought to carry the ark of God but the Levites. For them hath the Lord chosen to carry the ark of God, and to minister unto him forever. And David gathered all Israel together to Jerusalem, to bring up the ark of the Lord unto his place, which he had prepared for it. And David assembled the children of Aaron and the Levites, of the sons of Kohath, Uriel the chief, and his brethren, an hundred and twenty, of the sons of Merari, Asiah the chief, and his brethren, two hundred and twenty, of the sons of Gershom, Joel the chief, and his brethren, an hundred and thirty, of the sons of Eli Zaphon, Shemaiah the chief, and his brethren two hundred. Of the sons of Hebron, Eliel the chief, and his brethren fourscore. Of the sons of Uzziel, Aminadab the chief, and his brethren an hundred and twelve. And David called for Zadok and Abiathar the priests, and for the Levites, for Uriel, Asiah, and Joel, Shemaiah, and Eliel, and Aminadab, and said unto them, Ye are the chief of the fathers of the Levites. Sanctify yourselves, both ye and your brethren, that ye may bring up the ark of the Lord God of Israel unto the place that I have prepared for it. For because ye did it not at the first, the Lord our God made a breach upon us, for that we sought him not after the due order. So the priests and the Levites sanctified themselves to bring up the ark of the Lord God of Israel. And the children of the Levites bear the ark of God upon their shoulders with the staves thereon, as Moses commanded according to the word of the Lord. And David spake to the chief of the Levites to appoint their brethren to be the singers with instruments of music, psalteries and harps and cymbals sounding by lifting up the voice with joy. So the Levites appointed Heman the son of Joel, and of his brethren Asaph the son of Berechiah, and of the sons of Merari their brethren Ethan the son of Cushiah, and with them their brethren of the second degree, Zechariah, Ben, and Jeaziel, and Shemiramoth, and Jehiel, and Unai, Eliab, and Beniah, and Maasiah, and Mattathiah, and Eliphali, and Mikniah, and Obed-Edom, and Jeiel the porters. So the singers, Heman, Asaph, and Ethan, were appointed to sound with cymbals of brass. And Zechariah, and Aziel, and Shemiramoth, and Jehiel, and Unai, and Eliab, and Maasiah, and Beniah, with psalteries on Alamoth. And Mattathiah, and Eliphali, and Mikniah, and Obed-Edom, and Jeiel, and Azaziah, with harps on the Sheminith to excel. And Kenaniah, chief of the Levites, was for song. He instructed about the song, because he was skillful. And Berechiah and Elkanah were doorkeepers for the ark. And Shebaniah and Jehoshaphat, and Nethanel, and Amasai, and Zechariah, and Benaiah, and Eleazar, the priests, did blow with the trumpets before the ark of God. And Obed-Edom and Jehiah were doorkeepers for the ark. So David and the elders of Israel and the captains of the thousands went to bring up the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of the house of Obed-Edom with joy. And it came to pass, when God helped the Levites that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, that they offered seven bullocks and seven rams. And David was clothed with a robe of fine linen, and all the Levites that bear the ark, and the singers, and Kenaniah the master of the song with the singers. David also had upon him an ephod of linen. Thus all Israel brought up the ark of the covenant of the Lord 
with shouting and with sound of a cornet and with trumpets and with cymbals, making a noise with psalteries and harps. And it came to pass, as the ark of the covenant of the Lord came to the city of David, that Michael, the daughter of Saul, looking out at a window, saw King David dancing and playing. And she despised him in her heart. Chapter 16 So they brought the ark of God, and set it in the midst of the tent that David had pitched for it. And they offered burnt sacrifices and peace offerings before God. And when David had made an end of offering the burnt offerings and the peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord. And he dealt to every one of Israel, both man and woman, to every one a loaf of bread and a good piece of flesh and a flagon of wine. And he appointed certain of the Levites to minister before the ark of the Lord and to record and to thank and praise the Lord God of Israel. Asaph the chief, and next to him Zechariah, Jeiel, and Shemiramoth, and Jehiel, and Mattathiah, and Eliab, and Benaiah, and Obedidah. And Jeiel with psalteries and with harps, but Asaph made a sound with cymbals. Benaiah also, and Jehaziel the priest, with trumpets continually before the ark of the covenant of God. Then on that day David delivered first this psalm to thank the Lord into the hand of Asaph and his brethren. Give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him, sing psalms unto him, talk ye of all his wondrous works. Glory ye in his holy name, let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength, seek his face continually. Remember his marvelous works that he hath done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O ye seed of Israel his servant, ye children of Jacob his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. Be ye mindful always of his covenant, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations, even of the covenant which he made with Abraham, and of his oath unto Isaac, and had confirmed the same to Jacob for a law, and to Israel for an everlasting covenant, saying, Unto thee will I give the land of Canaan, the lot of your inheritance. When ye were but few, even a few, and strangers in it. And when they went from nation to nation, and from one kingdom to another people, he suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sakes, saying, Touch not mine anointed, and do my prophets no harm. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Show forth from day to day his salvation. Declare his glory among the heathen, his marvelous works among all nations. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. He also is to be feared above all gods, for all the gods of the people are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Glory and honor are in his presence. Strength and gladness are in his place. Give unto the Lord, ye kindreds of the people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth. The world also shall be stable, that it be not moved. Let the heavens be glad, and let the earth rejoice, and let men say among the nations, The Lord reigneth. Let the sea roar and the fullness thereof. Let the fields rejoice, and all that is therein. Then shall the trees of the wood sing out at the presence of the Lord, because he cometh to judge the earth. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. And say ye, Save us, O God of our salvation, and gather us together, and deliver us from the heathen, that we may give thanks to thy holy name, and glory in thy praise. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, forever and ever. And all the people said, Amen, and praised the Lord. So he left there before the ark of the covenant of the Lord, Asaph and his brethren, to minister before the ark continually, as every day's work required. And Obed-Edom with their brethren threescore and eight. Obed-Edom also the son of Jeduthun, and Hosea to be porters. And Zadok the priest, and his brethren the priests, before the tabernacle of the Lord, in the high place that was at Gibeon, to offer burnt offerings unto the Lord, upon the altar of the burnt offering continually, morning and evening, and to do according to all that is written in the law of the Lord, which he commanded Israel. And with them, Heman and Jeduthun, and the rest that were chosen, who were expressed by name, to give thanks to the Lord, because his mercy endureth forever. And with them, Heman and Jeduthun, with trumpets and cymbals, for those that should make a sound, and with musical instruments of God. And the sons of Jeduthun were porters. And all the people departed every man to his house, and David returned to bless his house. 
chapter 17. Now it came to pass, as David sat in his house, that David said to Nathan the prophet, Lo, I dwell in an house of cedars, but the ark of the covenant of the Lord remaineth under curtains. Then Nathan said unto David, Do all that is in thine heart, for God is with thee. And it came to pass the same night that the word of God came to Nathan, saying, Go and tell David my servant, Thus saith the Lord, Thou shalt not build me an house to dwell in. For I have not dwelt in an house since the day that I brought up Israel unto this day, but have gone from tent to tent and from one tabernacle to another. Wheresoever I have walked with all Israel, spake I a word to any of the judges of Israel whom I commanded to feed my people, saying, Why have ye not built me an house of cedars? Now therefore... Thus shalt thou say unto my servant David, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I took thee from the sheep cot, even from following the sheep, that thou shouldest be ruler over my people Israel. And I have been with thee whithersoever thou hast walked, and have cut off all thine enemies from before thee, and have made thee a name like the name of the great men that are in the earth. Also I will ordain a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, and they shall dwell in their place, and shall be moved no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness waste them any more, as at the beginning and since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel. Moreover, I will subdue all thine enemies. Furthermore, I tell thee that the Lord will build thee an house. And it shall come to pass, when thy days be expired, that thou must go to be with thy fathers, that I will raise up thy seed after thee, which shall be of thy sons, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build me an house and I will establish his throne forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son, and I will not take my mercy away from him, as I took it from him that was before thee. But I will settle him in mine house, and in my kingdom forever, and his throne shall be established forevermore. According to all these words, and according to all this vision, so did Nathan speak unto David. And David the king came and sat before the Lord, and said, Who am I? O Lord God, and what is mine house that thou hast brought me hitherto? And yet, this was a small thing in thine eyes, O God, for thou hast also spoken of thy servant's house for a great while to come, and hast regarded me according to the estate of a man of high degree, O Lord God. What can David speak more to thee for the honor of thy servant? For thou knowest thy servant. O Lord, for thy servant's sake, and according to thine own heart, hast thou done all this greatness, in making known all these great things. O Lord, there is none like thee, neither is there any God beside thee, according to all that we have heard with our ears. And what one nation in the earth is like thy people Israel, whom God went to redeem to be his own people, to make thee a name of greatness and terribleness, by driving out nations from before thy people, whom thou hast redeemed out of Egypt. For thy people Israel didst thou make thine own people forever, and thou, Lord, becamest their God. Therefore now, Lord, let the thing that thou hast spoken concerning thy servant and concerning his house be established forever, and do as thou hast said. Let it even be established that thy name may be magnified forever, saying, The Lord of hosts is the God of Israel, even a God to Israel. And let the house of David thy servant be established before thee. For thou, O my God, hast told thy servant that thou wilt build him an house. Therefore thy servant hath found in his heart to pray before thee. And now, Lord, thou art God, and hast promised this goodness unto thy servant. Now therefore let it please thee to bless the house of thy servant, that it may be before thee forever. For thou blessest, O Lord, and it shall be blessed forever. Chapter 18 now after this it came to pass that David smote the Philistines and subdued them, and took Gath and her towns out of the hand of the Philistines. And he smote Moab, and the Moabites became David's servants and brought gifts. And David smote Hadarezer king of Zobah unto Hamath, as he went to establish his dominion by the river Euphrates. And David took from him a thousand chariots, and seven thousand horsemen, and twenty thousand footmen. David also hocked all the chariot horses, but reserved of them an hundred chariots. And when the Syrians of Damascus came to help Hadarezer king of Zobah, David slew of the Syrians two and twenty thousand men. Then David put garrisons in Syria Damascus, and the Syrians became David's servants and brought gifts. Thus the Lord preserved David whithersoever he went. 
And David took the shields of gold that were on the servants of Hadarezer and brought them to Jerusalem. Likewise from Tibhath and from Kun, cities of Hadarezer, brought David very much brass, wherewith Solomon made the brazen sea and the pillars and the vessels of brass. Now when Tohu, king of Hamath, heard how David had smitten all the host of Hadarezer, king of Zobah, he sent Hadoram his son to King David to inquire of his welfare and to congratulate him, because he had fought against Hadarezer and smitten him. For Hadarezer had war with Tohu, and with him all manner of vessels of gold and silver and brass. Them also King David dedicated unto the Lord with the silver and the gold that he brought from all these nations, from Edom and from Moab and from the children of Ammon and from the Philistines and from Amalek. Moreover, Abishai the son of Zeruiah slew of the Edomites in the valley of Salt eighteen thousand, and he put garrisons in Edom, and all the Edomites became David's servants. Thus the Lord preserved David whithersoever he went. So David reigned over all Israel, and executed judgment and justice among all his people. And Joab the son of Zeruiah was over the host, and Jehoshaphat the son of Ahilad recorded. And Zadok the son of Ahitab, and Abimelech the son of Abiathar were the priests and Shavshah was scribe. And Benaiah the son of Jehoiada was over the Carathites and the Pelathites. And the sons of David were chief about the king. Chapter 19 Now it came to pass after this, that Nahash the king of the children of Ammon died, and his son reigned in his stead. And David said, I will show kindness unto Hanan the son of Nahash, because his father showed kindness to me. And David sent messengers to comfort him concerning his father. So the servants of David came into the land of the children of Ammon to Hanan to comfort him. But the princes of the children of Ammon said to Hanan, Thinkest thou that David doth honor thy father, that he hath sent comforters unto thee? Are not his servants come unto thee for to search, and to overthrow, and to spy out the land? Wherefore Hanan took David's servants, and shaved them, and cut off their garments in the midst, hard by their buttocks, and sent them away. Then there went certain and told David how the men were served, and he sent to meet them, for the men were greatly ashamed. And the king said, Tarry at Jericho until your beards be grown, and then return. And when the children of Ammon saw that they had made themselves odious to David, Hanan and the children of Ammon sent a thousand talents of silver to hire them chariots and horsemen out of Mesopotamia, and out of Syria Maica, and out of Zobah. So they hired thirty and two thousand chariots and the king of Maacah and his people, who came and pitched before Medeba. And the children of Ammon gathered themselves together from their cities and came to battle. And when David heard of it, he sent Joab and all the host of the mighty men. And the children of Ammon came out and put the battle in array before the gate of the city. And the kings that were come were by themselves in the field. Now when Joab saw that the battle was set against him before and behind, he chose out of all the choice of Israel and put them in array against the Syrians. And the rest of the people he delivered unto the hand of Abishai his brother, and they set themselves in array against the children of Ammon. And he said, If the Syrians be too strong for me, then thou shalt help me. But if the children of Ammon be too strong for thee, then I will help thee. Be of good courage, and let us behave ourselves valiantly for our people and for the cities of our God, and let the Lord do that which is good in his sight. So Joab and the people that were with him drew nigh before the Syrians unto the battle, and they fled before him. And when the children of Ammon saw that the Syrians were fled, they likewise fled before Abishai his brother and entered into the city. Then Joab came to Jerusalem. And when the Syrians saw that they were put to the worst before Israel, they sent messengers and drew forth the Syrians that were beyond the river. And Shophak, the captain of the host of Hadarezer, went before them. And it was told David, and he gathered all Israel and passed over Jordan and came upon them and set the battle in array against them. So when David had put the battle in array against the Syrians, they fought with him. But the Syrians fled before Israel, and David slew of the Syrians seven thousand men which fought in chariots, and forty thousand footmen, and killed Shophak, the captain of the host. And when the servants of Hadarezer saw that they were put to the worst before Israel, they made peace with David and became his servants. Neither would the Syrians help the children of Ammon any more. Chapter 20 and it came to pass that after the year was expired, at the time that kings go out to battle, Joab led forth the power of the army and wasted the country of the children of Ammon and came and besieged Rabbah. But David tarried at Jerusalem. And Joab smote Rabbah and destroyed it. And David took the crown of their king from off his head and found it to weigh a talent of gold. And there were precious stones in it. And it was set upon David's head. And he brought also exceeding much spoil out of the city. And he brought out the people that were in it and cut them with saws and with harrows of iron and with axes. 
Even so dealt David with all the cities of the children of Ammon. And David and all the people returned to Jerusalem. And it came to pass after this that there arose war at Gezer with the Philistines, at which time Sibekai the Hushathite slew Sipei that was of the children of the giant, and they were subdued. And there was war again with the Philistines, and Elhanan the son of Jair slew Lamai, the brother of Goliath the Gittite, whose spear staff was like a weaver's beam. And yet again there was war at Gath, where was a man of great stature, whose fingers and toes were four and twenty, six on each hand and six on each foot, and he also was the son of the giant. But when he defied Israel, Jonathan the son of Shimea, David's brother, slew him. These were born unto the giant in Gath, and they fell by the hand of David and by the hand of his servant. Chapter 21 And Satan stood up against Israel, and provoked David to number Israel. And David said to Joab and to the rulers of the people, Go, number Israel from Beersheba even to Dan, and bring the number of them to me, that I may know it. And Joab answered, The Lord make his people an hundred times so many more as they be. But, my lord the king, are they not all my lord's servants? Why then doth my lord require this thing? Why will he be a cause of trespass to Israel? Nevertheless, the king's word prevailed against Joab. Wherefore Joab departed, and went throughout all Israel, and came to Jerusalem. And Joab gave the sum of the number of the people unto David. And all they of Israel were a thousand thousand and an hundred thousand men that drew sword. And Judah was four hundred threescore and ten thousand men that drew sword. But Levi and Benjamin counted he not among them, for the king's word was abominable to Joab. And God was displeased with this thing, therefore he smote Israel. And David said unto God, I have sinned greatly because I have done this thing. But now I beseech thee, do away the iniquity of thy servant, for I have done very foolishly. And the Lord spake unto Gad, David's seer, saying, Go and tell David, saying, Thus saith the Lord, I offer thee three things. Choose thee one of them, that I may do it unto thee. So Gad came to David and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Choose thee either three years' famine, or three months to be destroyed before thy foes, while that the sword of thine enemies overtaketh thee, or else three days the sword of the Lord, even the pestilence in the land, and the angel of the Lord destroying throughout all the coasts of Israel. Now therefore advise thyself what word I shall bring again to him that sent me. And David said unto Gad, I am in a great strait. Let me fall now into the hand of the Lord, for very great are his mercies, but let me not fall into the hand of man. So the Lord sent pestilence upon Israel, and there fell of Israel seventy thousand men. And God sent an angel into Jerusalem to destroy it. And as he was destroying, the Lord beheld, and he repented him of the evil, and said to the angel that destroyed, It is enough, stay now thine hand. And the angel of the Lord stood by the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. And David lifted up his eyes and saw the angel of the Lord stand between the earth and the heaven, having a drawn sword in his hand, stretched out over Jerusalem. Then David and the elders of Israel who were clothed in sackcloth fell upon their faces, and David said unto God, Is it not I that commanded the people to be numbered? Even I it is that have sinned and done evil indeed. But as for these sheep, what have they done? Let thine hand, I pray thee, O Lord my God, be on me and on my father's house, but not on thy people that they should be plagued. Then the angel of the Lord commanded Gad to say to David that David should go up and set up an altar unto the Lord in the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. And David went up at the saying of Gad, which he spake in the name of the Lord. And Ornan turned back, and saw the angel, and his four sons with him hid themselves. Now Ornan was threshing wheat. And as David came to Ornan, Ornan looked and saw David, and went out of the threshing floor, and bowed himself to David with his face to the ground. Then David said to Ornan, Grant me the place of this threshing floor, that I may build an altar therein unto the Lord. Thou shalt grant it me for the full price, that the plague may be stayed from the people. And Ornan said unto David, Take it to thee, and let my lord the king do that which is good in his eyes. Lo, I give thee the oxen also for burnt offerings, and the threshing instruments for wood, and the wheat for the meat offering. I give it all. And king David said to Ornan, Nay, but I will verily buy it for the full price, for I will not take that which is thine for the lord, nor offer burnt offerings without cost. So David gave to Ornan for the place six hundred shekels of gold by weight. And David built there an altar unto the Lord, and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings, and called upon the Lord. And he answered him from heaven by fire upon the altar of burnt offering. And the Lord commanded the angel, and he put up his sword again into the sheath thereof. 
At that time, when David saw that the Lord had answered him in the threshing floor of Orn and the Jebusite, then he sacrificed there. For the tabernacle of the Lord, which Moses made in the wilderness, and the altar of the burnt offering, were at that season in the high place at Gibeon. But David could not go before it to inquire of God, for he was afraid because of the sword of the angel of the Lord. Chapter 22 Then David said, This is the house of the Lord God, and this is the altar of the burnt offering for Israel. And David commanded to gather together the strangers that were in the land of Israel, and he set masons to hew wrought stones to build the house of God. And David prepared iron in abundance for the nails, for the doors of the gates, and for the joinings, and brass in abundance without weight. Also cedar trees in abundance, for the Zidonians and they of Tyre brought much cedar wood to David. And David said, Solomon my son is young and tender, and the house that is to be built for the Lord must be exceeding magnifical, of fame and of glory throughout all countries. I will therefore now make preparation for it. So David prepared abundantly before his death. Then he called for Solomon his son, and charged him to build an house for the Lord God of Israel. And David said to Solomon, My son, as for me, it was in my mind to build an house unto the name of the Lord my God. But the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Thou hast shed blood abundantly, and hast made great wars. Thou shalt not build an house unto my name, because thou hast shed much blood upon the earth in my sight. Behold, a son shall be born to thee, who shall be a man of rest, and I will give him rest from all his enemies round about. For his name shall be Solomon, and I will give peace and quietness unto Israel in his days. He shall build an house for my name, and he shall be my son, and I will be his father, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom over Israel forever. Now, my son, the Lord be with thee, and prosper thou, and build the house of the Lord thy God as he hath said of thee. Only the Lord give thee wisdom and understanding, and give thee charge concerning Israel, that thou mayest keep the law of the Lord thy God. Then shalt thou prosper, if thou takest heed to fulfill the statutes and judgments which the Lord charged Moses with concerning Israel. Be strong and of good courage. Dread not, nor be dismayed. Now behold, in my trouble I have prepared for the house of the Lord an hundred thousand talents of gold, and a thousand thousand talents of silver, and of brass and iron without weight, for it is in abundance. Timber also and stone have I prepared, and thou mayest add thereto. Moreover, there are workmen with thee in abundance, hewers and workers of stone and timber, and all manner of cunning men for every manner of work. Of the gold, the silver, and the brass, and the iron, there is no number. Arise, therefore, and be doing, and the Lord be with thee. David also commanded all the princes of Israel to help Solomon his son, saying, Is not the Lord your God with you? And hath he not given you rest on every side? For he hath given the inhabitants of the land into mine hand, and the land is subdued before the Lord and before his people. Now set your heart and your soul to seek the Lord your God. Arise, therefore, and build ye the sanctuary of the Lord God, to bring the ark of the covenant of the Lord and the holy vessels of God into the house that is to be built to the name of the Lord. Chapter 23 So when David was old and full of days, he made Solomon his son king over Israel. And he gathered together all the princes of Israel with the priests and the Levites. Now the Levites were numbered from the age of thirty years and upward, and their number by their poles, man by man, was thirty and eight thousand, of which twenty and four thousand were to set forward the work of the house of the Lord, and six thousand were officers and judges. Moreover, four thousand were porters, and four thousand praised the Lord with the instruments which I made, said David, to praise therewith. And David divided them into courses among the sons of Levi, namely Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. Of the Gershonites were Laodan and Shimei. The sons of Laodan, the chief was Jehiel, and Zetham, and Joel, three. The sons of Shimei, Shalomith, and Haziel, and Haran, three. These were the chief of the fathers of Laodan. And the sons of Shimei were Jehath, Zina, and Jeish, and Beriah. These four were the sons of Shimei. And Jahath was the chief, and Ziza the second. But Jeish and Beriah had not many sons, therefore they were in one reckoning according to their father's house. The sons of Kohath, Amram, Izhar, Hebron, and Uzziel, four. The sons of Amram, Aaron, and Moses. And Aaron was separated, that he should sanctify the most holy things, he and his sons forever, to burn incense before the Lord, to minister unto him, and to bless in his name forever. Now concerning Moses, the man of God, his sons were named of the tribe of Levi. 
The sons of Moses were Gershom and Eliezer. Of the sons of Gershom, Shabuel was the chief. And the sons of Eliezer were Rehabiah the chief. And Eliezer had none other sons, but the sons of Rehabiah were very many. Of the sons of Izhar, Shalomit the chief. Of the sons of Hebron, Jeriah the first, Amariah the second, Jehaziel the third, and Jechamian the fourth. Of the sons of Uzziel, Micah the first, and Josiah the second. The sons of Merari, Malai and Mushai. The sons of Malai, Eleazar and Kish. And Eleazar died and had no sons but daughters, and their brethren, the sons of Kish, took them. The sons of Mushai, Malai and Eder and Jeremoth, three. These were the sons of Levi after the house of their fathers, even the chief of the fathers, as they were counted by number of names by their poles, that did the work for the service of the house of the Lord from the age of twenty years and upward. For David said, The Lord God of Israel hath given rest unto his people, that they may dwell in Jerusalem forever, and also unto the Levites. They shall no more carry the tabernacle, nor any vessels of it for the service thereof. For by the last words of David, the Levites were numbered from twenty years old and above, because their office was to wait on the sons of Aaron for the service of the house of the Lord, in the courts, and in the chambers, and in the purifying of all holy things, and the work of the service of the house of God, both for the showbread, and for the fine flour for meat offering, and for the unleavened cakes, and for that which is baked in the pan, and for that which is fried, and for all manner of measure and size, and to stand every morning to thank and praise the Lord, and likewise at even and to offer all burnt sacrifices unto the Lord in the Sabbaths, in the new moons, and on the set feasts, by number, according to the order commanded unto them, continually before the Lord. And that they should keep the charge of the tabernacle of the congregation, and the charge of the holy place, and the charge of the sons of Aaron their brethren, in the service of the house of the Lord. Chapter 24 Now these are the divisions of the sons of Aaron. The sons of Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, Eleazar and Ithamar. But Nadab and Abihu died before their father, and had no children. Therefore Eleazar and Ithamar executed the priest's office. And David distributed them, both Zadok of the sons of Eleazar, and Ahimelech of the sons of Ithamar, according to their offices in their service. And there were more chief men found of the sons of Eleazar than of the sons of Ithamar, and thus were they divided. Among the sons of Eleazar there were sixteen chief men of the house of their fathers, and eight among the sons of Ithamar according to the house of their fathers. Thus were they divided by lot, one sort with another. For the governors of the sanctuary and governors of the house of God were of the sons of Eleazar and of the sons of Ethamar. And Shemaiah the son of Nethanel the scribe, one of the Levites, wrote them before the king and the princes, and Zadok the priest, and Ahimelech the son of Abiathar, and before the chief of the fathers of the priests and Levites. One principal household being taken for Eleazar, and one taken for Ithamar. Now the first lot came forth to Jehoiarib, the second to Jediah, the third to Herim, the fourth to Siorim, the fifth to Malchijah, the sixth to Mijamin, the seventh to Hakaz, the eighth to Abijah, the ninth to Jeshua, the tenth to Shechaniah, the eleventh to Eliashib, the twelfth to Jachin, the thirteenth to Hapa, the fourteenth to Jeshebeab, the fifteenth to Bilgah, the sixteenth to Immer, the seventeenth to Hezer, the eighteenth to Aphses, the nineteenth to Pethahiah, the twentieth to Jehezekel, the one and twentieth to Jachin, the two and twentieth to Gamel, the three and twentieth to Deliah, the four and twentieth to Maaziah. These were the orderings of them in their service, to come into the house of the Lord according to their manner, under Aaron their father, as the Lord God of Israel had commanded him. And the rest of the sons of Levi were these, of the sons of Amram, Shubael, of the sons of Shubael, Jediah. Concerning Rehabiah, of the sons of Rehabiah, the first was Ishiah, of the Isharites, Shalomoth of the sons of Shalomoth, Jehah, and the sons of Hebron, Jeriah the first, Amariah the second, Jehaziel the third, Jechamiam the fourth. Of the sons of Uzziel, Micah, of the sons of Micah, Shamer. The brother of Micah was Ishiah, of the sons of Ishiah, Zechariah. The sons of Merari were Malai and Mushai, the sons of Jeaziah, Bino. The sons of Merari by Jeaziah, Bino, and Shoham, and Zachar, and Ibrai. Of Malai came Eleazar, who had no sons. Concerning Kish, the son of Kish was Jeramiel. The sons also of Mushai, Malai, and Eda, and Jeremoth. These were the sons of the Levites, after the house of their fathers. These likewise cast lots over against their brethren, the sons of Aaron, in the presence of David the king, and Zadok, and Ahimelech, and the chief of the fathers of the priests and Levites.
even the principal fathers, over against their younger brethren. Chapter 25 Moreover, David and the captains of the host separated to the service of the sons of Asaph and of Heman and of Jeduthun, who should prophesy with harps, with psalteries, and with cymbals. And the number of the workmen according to their service was, of the sons of Asaph, Zachar and Joseph and Nephaniah and Esarela, the sons of Asaph under the hands of Asaph, which prophesied according to the order of the king. Of Jeduthun, the sons of Jeduthun, Gedaliah and Zerai and Jeshiah, Hashabiah and Mattathiah, six under the hands of their father Jeduthun, who prophesied with a harp to give thanks and to praise the Lord. Of Heman, the sons of Heman, Bakiah, Mattaniah, Uzziel, Shabuel, and Jeremoth, Hananiah, Hanani, Eliathah, Gidaltai, and Romamtaiza, Joshbekasha, Melothai, Hotha, and Mahaziel. All these were the sons of Heman, the king's seer in the words of God, to lift up the horn. And God gave to Heman fourteen sons and three daughters. All these were under the hands of their father for song in the house of the Lord, with cymbals, psalteries, and harps for the service of the house of God, according to the king's order to Asaph, Jeduthun, and Heman. So the number of them with their brethren that were instructed in the songs of the Lord, even all that were cunning, was two hundred fourscore and eight. And they cast lots, ward against ward, as well the small as the great, the teacher as the scholar. Now the first lot came forth for Asaph to Joseph, the second to get Eliah, who with his brethren and sons were twelve, the third to Zachar, he, his sons and his brethren were twelve, the fourth to Israel, he, his sons and his brethren were twelve, the fifth to Nathaniah, he, his sons and his brethren were twelve, the sixth to Bacchiah, he, his sons and his brethren were twelve, the seventh to Jesherila, he, his sons and his brethren were twelve, the eighth to Jeshiah, he, his sons and his brethren were twelve, the ninth to Mataniah, he, his sons and his brethren were twelve, the tenth to Shimei, he, his sons and his brethren were twelve, the eleventh to Azariel, he, his sons and his brethren were twelve, the twelfth to Hashabiah, he, his sons and his brethren were twelve, the thirteenth to Shubael, he, his sons and his brethren were twelve, the fourteenth to Mattithiah, he, his sons and his brethren were twelve, the fifteenth to Jeremoth, he, his sons and his brethren were twelve, the sixteenth to Hananiah, he, his sons and his brethren were twelve, the seventeenth to Joshbekasha, he, his sons and his brethren were twelve, the eighteenth to Hanani, he, his sons and his brethren were twelve, the nineteenth to Malothi, he, his sons and his brethren were twelve, the twentieth to Eliathah, he, his sons and his brethren were twelve, the one and twentieth to Hothah, he, his sons and his brethren were twelve, the two and twentieth to Gedaltai, he, his sons and his brethren were twelve, the three and twentieth to Mahazioth, he, his sons and his brethren were twelve, the four and twentieth to Romantaiza, he, his sons and his brethren were twelve. Chapter 26 Concerning the divisions of the porters, of the Korhites was Meshulamiah the son of Kori, of the sons of Asaph. And the sons of Meshulamiah were Zechariah the firstborn, Jediel the second, Zebadiah the third, Jathniel the fourth, Elam the fifth, Jehohanan the sixth, Elioenai the seventh. Moreover, the sons of Obed-Edom were Shemaiah the firstborn, Jehozadab the second, Joah the third, and Sekar the fourth, and Nethaniel the fifth, Amiel the sixth, Issachar the seventh, Bealthi the eighth. For God blessed him. Also unto Shemaiah his son were sons born that ruled throughout the house of their father, for they were mighty men of valor. The sons of Shemaiah, Athnai and Rephael and Obed, Elzabad, whose brethren were strong men, Elihu and Semachiah. All these of the sons of Obed-Edom, they and their sons and their brethren, able men for strength for the service, were threescore and two of Obed-Edom. And Meshulamiah had sons and brethren, strong men, eighteen. Also Hosa of the children of Merari had sons. Simri the chief, although he was not the firstborn, yet his father made him the chief. Hilkiah the second, Tevaliah the third, Zechariah the fourth. All the sons and brethren of Hosa were thirteen. Among these were the divisions of the porters, even among the chief men, having wards one against another to minister in the house of the Lord. And they cast lots as well the small as the great, according to the house of their fathers, for every gate. And the lot eastward fell to Shelemiah. Then for Zechariah his son, a wise counselor, they cast lots, and his lot came out northward, to Obed-Edom southward, and to his sons the house of Asaphim. To Shuppim and Hosah the lot came forth westward, with the gate Shaliket, by the causeway of the going up, ward against ward. Eastward were six Levites, northward four a day, southward four a day, and toward Asaphim two and two. At Parbar westward, four at the causeway, and two at Parbar. 
These are the divisions of the porters among the sons of Cori and among the sons of Merari. And of the Levites, Ahijah was over the treasures of the house of God and over the treasures of the dedicated things. As concerning the sons of Laodan, the sons of the Gershonite Laodan, chief fathers even of Laodan the Gershonite, were Jehai-Eli. The sons of Jehai-Eli, Zetham, and Joel his brother, which were over the treasures of the house of the Lord. Of the Amramites and the Isharites, the Hebronites and the Uzzielites, and Shabuel, the son of Gershom, the son of Moses, was ruler of the treasures. And his brethren by Eliezer, Rehabiah his son, and Jeshiah his son, and Joram his son, and Zikri his son, and Shalomith his son, which Shalomith and his brethren were over all the treasures of the dedicated things, which David the king and the chief fathers, the captains of the thousands and hundreds, and the captains of the host had dedicated. Out of the spoils won in battles did they dedicate to maintain the house of the Lord. And all that Samuel the seer, and Saul the son of Kish, and Abner the son of Ner, and Joab the son of Zeruiah had dedicated, and whosoever had dedicated anything, it was under the hand of Shalomith and of his brethren. Of the Isharites, Kenaniah and his sons were for the outward business over Israel, for officers and judges. And of the Hebronites, Ashabiah and his brethren, men of valor, a thousand and seven hundred, were officers among them of Israel on this side Jordan westward, in all the business of the Lord, and in the service of the king. Among the Hebronites was Jerijah the chief, even among the Hebronites, according to the generations of his fathers. In the fortieth year of the reign of David, they were sought for, and they were found among them mighty men of valor at Jazer of Gilead. And his brethren, men of valor, were two thousand and seven hundred chief fathers, whom King David made rulers over the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, for every matter pertaining to God and affairs of the king. Chapter 27 Now the children of Israel, after their number, to wit the chief fathers and captains of thousands and hundreds, and their officers that served the king in any matter of the courses which came in and went out month by month throughout all the months of the year, of every course were twenty and four thousand. Over the first course for the first month was Jashabian the son of Zabdiel, and in his course were twenty and four thousand. Of the children of Perez was the chief of all the captains of the host for the first month. And over the course of the second month was Dodai and Ahohite, and of his course was Mikloth also the ruler. In his course likewise were twenty and four thousand. The third captain of the host for the third month was Beniah the son of Jehoiada, a chief priest, and in his course were twenty and four thousand. This is that Beniah who was mighty among the thirty and above the thirty, and in his course was Amizabad his son. The fourth captain for the fourth month was Asahel the brother of Joab, and Zebediah his son after him, and in his course were twenty and four thousand. The fifth captain for the fifth month was Shamhath the Israelite, and in his course were twenty and four thousand. The sixth captain for the sixth month was Ira the son of Ikesh the Tekoite, and in his course were twenty and four thousand. The seventh captain for the seventh month was Helez the Pelonite of the children of Ephraim, and in his course were twenty and four thousand. The eighth captain for the eighth month was Sibekai the Hushathite of the Zarhites, and in his course were twenty and four thousand. The ninth captain for the ninth month was Abiezer the Anatothite of the Benjamites, and in his course were twenty and four thousand. The tenth captain for the tenth month was Meharai the Natophathite of the Zarhites, and in his course were twenty and four thousand. The eleventh captain for the eleventh month was Beniah the Pyrathonite of the children of Ephraim, and in his course were twenty and four thousand. The twelfth captain for the twelfth month was Heldai the Netophathite of Othniel, and in his course were twenty and four thousand. Furthermore, over the tribes of Israel, the ruler of the Reubenites was Eliezer the son of Zikri, of the Simeonites, Shephatiah the son of Maacah, of the Levites, Hashabiah the son of Kemuel, of the Aaronites, Zadok, of Judah, Elihu, one of the brethren of David, of Issachar, Amri, the son of Michael, of Zebulun, Ishmael, the son of Obadiah, of Naphtali, Jeremoth, the son of Azrael, of the children of Ephraim, Hoshea, the son of Azaziah, of the half-tribe of Manasseh, Joel, the son of Pediah, of the half-tribe of Manasseh in Gilead, Iddo, the son of Zechariah, of Benjamin, Jeassiel, the son of Abner, of Dan, Azareel, the son of Jeroham. These were the princes of the tribes of Israel. But David took not the number of them from twenty years old and under, because the Lord had said he would increase Israel like to the stars of the heavens. Joab, the son of Zeruiah, began the number, but he finished not, because there fell wrath for it against Israel. Neither was the number put in the account of the chronicles of King David. And over the king's treasures was Asmaveth, the son of Adiel. 
And over the storehouses in the fields, in the cities, and in the villages, and in the castles, was Jehonathan, the son of Uzziah. And over them that did the work of the field for tillage of the ground was Ezri, the son of Keilah. And over the vineyards was Shimei, the Ramathite. Over the increase of the vineyards for the wine cellars was Zabdi, the Shifmite. And over the olive trees and the sycamore trees that were in the low plains was Baalhanan, the Gadirite. And over the cellars of oil was Joash. And over the herds that fed in Sharon was Shitrei the Sharonite. And over the herds that were in the valleys was Shaphat the son of Adlai. Over the camels also was Obil the Ishmaelite. And over the asses was Jediah the Meronathite. And over the flocks was Jazes the Hagirite. All these were the rulers of the substance which was King David's. Also Jonathan, David's uncle, was a counselor, a wise man, and a scribe. And Jehiel the son of Hakmoni was with the king's son. And Ahithophel was the king's counselor, and Hushai the archite was the king's companion. And after Ahithophel was Jehoiada the son of Beniah, and Abiathar. And the general of the king's army was Joab. Chapter 28 And David assembled all the princes of Israel, the princes of the tribes, and the captains of the companies that ministered to the king by course, and the captains over the thousands, and captains over the hundreds, and the stewards over all the substance and possession of the king, and of his sons, with the officers, and with the mighty men, and with all the valiant men, unto Jerusalem. Then David the king stood up upon his feet and said, Hear me, my brethren and my people. As for me, I had in mine heart to build an house of rest for the ark of the covenant of the Lord, and for the footstool of our God, and had made ready for the building. But God said unto me, Thou shalt not build an house for my name, because thou hast been a man of war, and hast shed blood. Howbeit, the Lord God of Israel chose me before all the house of my father to be king over Israel forever, for he hath chosen Judah to be the ruler. And of the house of Judah, the house of my father, and among the sons of my father, he liked me to make me king over all Israel. And of all my sons, for the Lord hath given me many sons, he hath chosen Solomon my son to sit upon the throne of the kingdom of the Lord over Israel. And he said unto me, Solomon thy son, he shall build my house and my courts. For I have chosen him to be my son, and I will be his father. Moreover, I will establish his kingdom forever, if he be constant to do my commandments and my judgments as at this day. Now therefore, in the sight of all Israel, the congregation of the Lord, and in the audience of our God, keep and seek for all the commandments of the Lord your God, that ye may possess this good land and leave it for an inheritance for your children after you forever. And thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy father, and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searcheth all hearts, and understandeth all the imaginations of the thoughts. If thou seek him, he will be found of thee. But if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. Take heed now, for the Lord hath chosen thee to build an house for the sanctuary. Be strong, and do it. Then David gave to Solomon his son the pattern of the porch, and of the houses thereof, and of the treasuries thereof, and of the upper chambers thereof, and of the inner parlors thereof, and of the place of the mercy seat, and the pattern of all that he had by the spirit of the courts of the house of the Lord, and of all the chambers round about, of the treasuries of the house of God, and of the treasuries of the dedicated things. Also for the courses of the priests and the Levites, and for all the work of the service of the house of the Lord, and for all the vessels of service in the house of the Lord. He gave of gold by weight for things of gold, for all instruments of all manner of service, silver also for all instruments of silver by weight, for all instruments of every kind of service, even the weight for the candlesticks of gold and for their lamps of gold by weight for every candlestick and for the lamps thereof, and for the candlesticks of silver by weight, both for the candlestick and also for the lamps thereof, according to the use of every candlestick. And by weight he gave gold for the tables of showbread for every table, and likewise silver for the tables of silver, also pure gold for the flesh hooks and the bowls and the cups. And for the golden basins he gave gold by weight for every basin, and likewise silver by weight for every basin of silver. And for the altar of incense, refined gold by weight, and gold for the pattern of the chariot of the cherubims that spread out their wings and covered the ark of the covenant of the Lord. All this, said David, the Lord made me understand in writing by his hand upon me, even all the works of this pattern. And David said to Solomon his son, Be strong and of good courage, and do it. Fear not, nor be dismayed. For the Lord God, even my God, will be with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee, until thou hast finished all the work for the service of the house of the Lord. And behold, 
the courses of the priests and the Levites, even they shall be with thee for all the service of the house of God. And there shall be with thee for all manner of workmanship, every willing, skillful man for any manner of service. Also the princes and all the people will be holy at thy commandment. Chapter 29 Furthermore, David the king said unto all the congregation, Solomon my son, whom alone God hath chosen, is yet young and tender, and the work is great, for the palace is not for man, but for the Lord God. Now I have prepared with all my might for the house of my God the gold for things to be made of gold, and the silver for things of silver, and the brass for things of brass, the iron for things of iron, and wood for things of wood, onyx stones, and stones to be set, glistering stones, and of divers colors, and all manner of precious stones, and marble stones in abundance. Moreover, because I have set my affection to the house of my God, I have of mine own proper good of gold and silver, which I have given to the house of my God, over and above all that I have prepared for the holy house, even three thousand talents of gold, of the gold of Ophir, and seven thousand talents of refined silver, to overlay the walls of the houses withal. The gold for things of gold, and the silver for things of silver, and for all manner of work to be made by the hands of artificers. And who then is willing to consecrate his service this day unto the Lord. Then the chief of the fathers and princes of the tribes of Israel, and the captains of thousands and of hundreds, with the rulers of the king's work, offered willingly, and gave for the service of the house of God, of gold, five thousand talents and ten thousand drams, and of silver, ten thousand talents, and of brass, eighteen thousand talents, and one hundred thousand talents of iron. And they with whom precious stones were found, gave them to the treasure of the house of the Lord by the hand of Jehiel the Gershonite. Then the people rejoiced, for that they offered willingly, because with perfect heart they offered willingly to the Lord. And David the king also rejoiced with great joy. Wherefore David blessed the Lord before all the congregation. And David said, Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory, and the victory, and the majesty. For all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. Both riches and honor come of thee, and thou reignest over all. And in thine hand is power and might, and in thine hand it is to make great, and to give strength unto all. Now therefore, our God, we thank thee, and praise thy glorious name. But who am I, and what is my people, that we should be able to offer so willingly after this sort? For all things come of thee, and of thine own have we given thee. For we are strangers before thee, and sojourners, as were all our fathers. Our days on the earth are as a shadow, and there is none abiding. O Lord our God, all this store that we have prepared to build thee an house for thine holy name cometh of thine hand, and is all thine own. I know also, my God, that thou triest the heart, and hast pleasure in uprightness. As for me, in the uprightness of mine heart, I have willingly offered all these things. And now have I seen with joy thy people, which are present here, to offer willingly unto thee. O Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, our fathers, keep this forever in the imagination of the thoughts of the heart of thy people, and prepare their heart unto thee. And give unto Solomon, my son, a perfect heart, to keep thy commandments, thy testimonies, and thy statutes, and to do all these things, and to build the palace for the which I have made provision. And David said to all the congregation, Now bless the Lord your God. And all the congregation blessed the Lord God of their fathers, and bowed down their heads, and worshipped the Lord and the King. And they sacrificed sacrifices unto the Lord, and offered burnt offerings unto the Lord on the morrow after that day even a thousand bullocks, a thousand rams, and a thousand lambs, with their drink offerings, and sacrifices in abundance for all Israel, and did eat and drink before the Lord on that day with great gladness. And they made Solomon the son of David king the second time, and anointed him unto the Lord to be the chief governor, and Zadok to be priest. Then Solomon sat on the throne of the Lord as king, instead of David his father, and prospered, and all Israel obeyed him. And all the princes and the mighty men and all the sons likewise of King David submitted themselves unto Solomon the king. And the Lord magnified Solomon exceedingly in the sight of all Israel, and bestowed upon him such royal majesty as had not been on any king before him in Israel. 
Thus, David, the son of Jesse, reigned over all Israel. And the time that he reigned over Israel was forty years. Seven years reigned he in Hebron, and thirty and three years reigned he in Jerusalem. And he died in a good old age, full of days, riches, and honor. And Solomon, his son, reigned in his stead. Now the acts of David the king, first and last, behold, they are written in the book of Samuel the seer, and in the book of Nathan the prophet, and in the book of Gad the seer, with all his reign and his might, and the times that went over him, and over Israel, and over all the kingdoms of the countries. The end of the first book of the Chronicles. The Holy Bible, the King James Version. Read by Alexander Scorby. The second book of the Chronicles, chapter 1. And Solomon the son of David was strengthened in his kingdom, and the Lord his God was with him, and magnified him exceedingly. Then Solomon spake unto all Israel, to the captains of thousands and of hundreds, and to the judges, and to every governor in all Israel, the chief of the fathers. So Solomon and all the congregation with him went to the high place that was at Gibeon, for there was the tabernacle of the congregation of God, which Moses the servant of the Lord had made in the wilderness. But the ark of God had David brought up from kirjath Jearim to the place which David had prepared for it, for he had pitched a tent for it at Jerusalem. Moreover, the brazen altar that Bezalel the son of Uri, the son of Hur, had made, he put before the tabernacle of the Lord. And Solomon and the congregation sought unto it. And Solomon went up thither to the brazen altar before the Lord, which was at the tabernacle of the congregation, and offered a thousand burnt offerings upon it. In that night did God appear unto Solomon, and said unto him, Ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said unto God, Thou hast showed great mercy unto David my father, and hast made me to reign in his stead. Now, O Lord God, let thy promise unto David my father be established, for thou hast made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. Give me now wisdom and knowledge, that I may go out and come in before this people, for who can judge this thy people that is so great? And God said to Solomon, because this was in thine heart, and thou hast not asked riches, wealth, or honor, nor the life of thine enemies, neither yet hast asked long life, but hast asked wisdom and knowledge for thyself, that thou mayest judge my people over whom I have made thee king, wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee. And I will give thee riches and wealth and honor, such as none of the kings have had that have been before thee, neither shall there any after thee have the like. Then Solomon came from his journey to the high place that was at Gibeon to Jerusalem from before the tabernacle of the congregation and reigned over Israel. And Solomon gathered chariots and horsemen and he had a thousand and four hundred chariots and twelve thousand horsemen which he placed in the chariot cities and with the king at Jerusalem. And the king made silver and gold at Jerusalem as plenteous as stones and cedar trees made he as the sycamore trees that are in the vale for abundance. And Solomon had horses brought out of Egypt and linen yarn. The king's merchants received the linen yarn at a price. And they fetched up and brought forth out of Egypt a chariot for six hundred shekels of silver and an horse for an hundred and fifty. And so brought they out horses for all the kings of the Hittites and for the kings of Syria by their means. Chapter 2 And Solomon determined to build a house for the name of the Lord and a house for his kingdom. And Solomon told out threescore and ten thousand men to bear burdens, and fourscore thousand to hew in the mountain, and three thousand and six hundred to oversee them. And Solomon sent to Huram the king of Tyre, saying, As thou didst deal with David my father, and didst send him cedars to build him an house to dwell therein, even so deal with me. Behold, I build an house to the name of the Lord my God, to dedicate it to him, and to burn before him sweet incense, and for the continual showbread, and for the burnt offerings morning and evening, on the Sabbaths and on the new moons, and on the solemn feasts of the Lord our God. This is an ordinance forever to Israel. And the house which I build is great, for great is our God above all gods. But who is able to build him an house, seeing the heaven and heaven of heavens cannot contain him? Who am I then that I should build him an house, save only to burn sacrifice before him? Send me now therefore a man cunning to work in gold and in silver and in brass and in iron and in purple and crimson and blue, and that can skill to grave with the cunning men that are with me in Judah and in Jerusalem, whom David my father did provide. Send me also cedar trees, fir trees, and algum trees out of Lebanon, 
For I know that thy servants can skill to cut timber in Lebanon, and behold, my servants shall be with thy servants, even to prepare me timber in abundance. For the house which I am about to build shall be wonderful great. And behold, I will give to thy servants the hewers that cut timber, twenty thousand measures of beet and wheat, and twenty thousand measures of barley, and twenty thousand baths of wine, and twenty thousand baths of oil. And Huram the king of Tyre answered in writing, which he sent to Solomon, Because the Lord hath loved his people, he hath made thee king over them. Huram said moreover, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, that made heaven and earth, who hath given to David the king a wise son, endued with prudence and understanding, that might build an house for the Lord, and an house for his kingdom. And now I have sent a cunning man, endued with understanding, of Huram my father's, the son of a woman of the daughters of Dan, and his father was a man of Tyre, skillful to work in gold, and in silver, in brass, in iron, in stone, and in timber, in purple, in blue, and in fine linen, and in crimson, also to grave any manner of graving, and to find out every device which shall be put to him, with thy cunning men, and with the cunning men of my lord David thy father. Now therefore, the wheat and the barley, the oil and the wine which my lord hath spoken of, let him send unto his servants, and we will cut wood out of Lebanon as much as thou shalt need and we will bring it to thee in floats by sea to Joppa, and thou shalt carry it up to Jerusalem. And Solomon numbered all the strangers that were in the land of Israel, after the numbering wherewith David his father had numbered them, and they were found an hundred and fifty thousand and three thousand and six hundred. And he set threescore and ten thousand of them to be bearers of burdens, and fourscore thousand to be hewers in the mountain, and three thousand and six hundred overseers to set the people a work. Chapter 3 Then Solomon began to build the house of the Lord at Jerusalem in Mount Moriah, where the Lord appeared unto David his father, in the place that David had prepared, in the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. And he began to build in the second day of the second month, in the fourth year of his reign. Now these are the things wherein Solomon was instructed for the building of the house of God. The length by cubits after the first measure was threescore cubits, and the breadth twenty cubits. And the porch that was in the front of the house, the length of it was according to the breadth of the house, twenty cubits. And the height was an hundred and twenty. And he overlaid it within with pure gold. And the greater house he sealed with fir tree, which he overlaid with fine gold, and set thereon palm trees and chains. And he garnished the house with precious stones for beauty. And the gold was gold of Parbaean. He overlaid also the house, the beams, the posts, and the walls thereof, and the doors thereof with gold, and graved cherubims on the walls. And he made the most holy house, the length whereof was according to the breadth of the house, twenty cubits, and the breadth thereof twenty cubits. And he overlaid it with fine gold, amounting to six hundred talents. And the weight of the nails was fifty shekels of gold, and he overlaid the upper chambers with gold. And in the most holy house he made two cherubims of image work, and overlaid them with gold. And the wings of the cherubims were twenty cubits long. One wing of the one cherub was five cubits, reaching to the wall of the house, and the other wing was likewise five cubits, reaching to the wing of the other cherub. And one wing of the other cherub was five cubits, reaching to the wall of the house, and the other wing was five cubits also, joining to the wing of the other cherub. The wings of these cherubims spread themselves forth twenty cubits, and they stood on their feet, and their faces were inward. And he made the veil of blue and purple and crimson and fine linen, and wrought cherubims thereon. Also he made before the house two pillars of thirty and five cubits high, and the chapiter that was on the top of each of them was five cubits. And he made chains, as in the oracle, and put them on the heads of the pillars, and made an hundred pomegranates, and put them on the chains. And he reared up the pillars before the temple, one on the right hand and the other on the left, and called the name of that on the right hand, Jachin, and the name of that on the left, Boaz. Chapter 4 Moreover he made an altar of brass, twenty cubits the length thereof, and twenty cubits the breadth thereof, and ten cubits the height thereof. Also he made a molten sea of ten cubits from brim to brim, round in compass, and five cubits the height thereof, and a line of thirty cubits did compass it round about. And under it was the similitude of oxen, which did compass it round about, ten in a cubit, compassing the sea round about. Two rows of oxen were cast when it was cast. It stood upon twelve oxen, three looking toward the north, and three looking toward the west, and three looking toward the south, and three looking toward the east. 
and the sea was set above upon them, and all their hinder parts were inward, and the thickness of it was an hand breadth, and the brim of it like the work of the brim of a cup with flowers of lilies, and it received and held three thousand baths. He made also ten lavers, and put five on the right hand and five on the left to wash in them. Such things as they offered for the burnt offering they washed in them, but the sea was for the priests to wash in. And he made ten candlesticks of gold according to their form, and set them in the temple, five on the right hand and five on the left. He made also ten tables and placed them in the temple, five on the right side and five on the left. And he made an hundred basins of gold. Furthermore, he made the court of the priests and the great court, and doors for the court, and overlaid the doors of them with brass. And he set the sea on the right side of the east end, over against the south. And Hurim made the pots and the shovels and the basins. And Hurim finished the work that he was to make for King Solomon for the house of God, to wit the two pillars, and the pummels and the chapiters which were on the top of the two pillars, and the two reeds to cover the two pummels of the chapiters which were on the top of the pillars, and four hundred pomegranates on the two wreaths, two rows of pomegranates on each wreath, to cover the two pummels of the chapiters which were upon the pillars. He made also bases, and labors made he upon the bases, one sea and twelve oxen under it. The pots also, and the shovels, and the flesh hooks, and all their instruments did Huram his father make to King Solomon for the house of the Lord, of bright brass. In the plain of Jordan did the king cast them, in the clay ground between Succoth and Zeredatha. Thus Solomon made all these vessels in great abundance, for the weight of the brass could not be found out. And Solomon made all the vessels that were for the house of God, the golden altar also, and the tables whereon the showbread was set. Moreover, the candlesticks with their lamps, that they should burn after the manner before the oracle of pure gold, and the flowers and the lamps and the tongs made he of gold, and that perfect gold, and the snuffers and the basins and the spoons and the censers of pure gold, and the entry of the house, the inner doors thereof for the most holy place, and the doors of the house of the temple were of gold. Chapter 5 Thus all the work that Solomon made for the house of the Lord was finished. And Solomon brought in all the things that David his father had dedicated. And the silver and the gold and all the instruments put he among the treasures of the house of God. Then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes, the chief of the fathers of the children of Israel under Jerusalem, to bring up the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of the city of David, which is Zion. Wherefore all the men of Israel assembled themselves unto the king in the feast which was in the seventh month. And all the elders of Israel came, and the Levites took up the ark. And they brought up the ark, and the tabernacle of the congregation, and all the holy vessels that were in the tabernacle. These did the priests and the Levites bring up. Also King Solomon and all the congregation of Israel that were assembled unto him before the ark, sacrificed sheep and oxen, which could not be told nor numbered for multitude. And the priests brought in the ark of the covenant of the Lord unto his place, to the oracle of the house, into the most holy place, even under the wings of the cherubims. For the cherubims spread forth their wings over the place of the ark, and the cherubims covered the ark and the staves thereof above. And they drew out the staves of the ark, that the ends of the staves were seen from the ark before the oracle, but they were not seen without. And there it is unto this day. There was nothing in the ark, save the two tables which Moses put therein at Horeb, when the Lord made a covenant with the children of Israel when they came out of Egypt. And it came to pass, when the priests were come out of the holy place, where all the priests that were present were sanctified, and did not then wait by course, also the Levites which were the singers, all of them of Asaph, of Heman, of Jeduthun, with their sons and their brethren, being arrayed in white linen, having cymbals and psalteries and harps, stood at the east end of the altar, and with them an hundred and twenty priests sounding with trumpets. It came even to pass, as the trumpeters and singers were as one to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord, and when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music, and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever, that then the house was filled with a cloud, even the house of the Lord, so that the priests could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God. Chapter 6 Then said Solomon, The Lord hath said that he would dwell in the thick darkness, but I have built an house of habitation for thee, and a place for thy dwelling forever. And the king turned his face, 
and blessed the whole congregation of Israel. And all the congregation of Israel stood. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who hath with his hands fulfilled that which he spake with his mouth to my father David, saying, Since the day that I brought forth my people out of the land of Egypt, I chose no city among all the tribes of Israel to build an house in, that my name might be there. Neither chose I any man to be a ruler over my people Israel. But I have chosen Jerusalem, that my name might be there, and have chosen David to be over my people Israel. Now it was in the heart of David my father to build a house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. But the Lord said to David my father, For as much as it was in thine heart to build a house for my name, thou didst well, in that it was in thine heart. Notwithstanding, thou shalt not build the house, but thy son which shall come forth of thy loins, he shall build the house for my name. The Lord therefore hath performed his word that he hath spoken. For I am risen up in the room of David my father, and am set on the throne of Israel as the Lord promised and have built the house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. And in it have I put the ark, wherein is the covenant of the Lord that he made with the children of Israel. And he stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the congregation of Israel, and spread forth his hands. For Solomon had made a brazen scaffold of five cubits long and five cubits broad and three cubits high, and had set it in the midst of the court. And upon it he stood and kneeled down upon his knees before all the congregation of Israel, and spread forth his hands toward heaven, and said, O Lord God of Israel, there is no God like thee in the heaven nor in the earth, which keepest covenant and showest mercy unto thy servants that walk before thee with all their hearts. Thou which hast kept with thy servant David my father that which thou hast promised him, and spakest with thy mouth, and hast fulfilled it with thine hand as it is this day. Now therefore, O Lord God of Israel, Keep with thy servant David my father that which thou hast promised him, saying, There shall not fail thee a man in my sight to sit upon the throne of Israel, yet so that thy children take heed to their way to walk in my law, as thou hast walked before me. Now then, O Lord God of Israel, let thy word be verified, which thou hast spoken unto thy servant David. But will God in very deed dwell with men on the earth? Behold, heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain thee, how much less this house which I have built. Have respect therefore to the prayer of thy servant and to his supplication, O Lord my God, to hearken unto the cry and the prayer which thy servant prayeth before thee, that thine eyes may be open upon this house day and night, upon the place whereof thou hast said that thou wouldest put thy name there, to hearken unto the prayer which thy servant prayeth toward this place. Hearken therefore unto the supplications of thy servant and of thy people Israel, which they shall make toward this place. Hear thou from thy dwelling place, even from heaven, and when thou hearest, forgive. If a man sin against his neighbor, and an oath be laid upon him to make him swear, and the oath come before thine altar in this house, then hear thou from heaven, and do, and judge thy servants by requiting the wicked, by recompensing his way upon his own head, by justifying the righteous, by giving him according to his righteousness. And if thy people Israel be put to the worst before the enemy, because they have sinned against thee, and shall return and confess thy name, and pray, and make supplication before thee in this house, then hear thou from the heavens, and forgive the sin of thy people Israel, and bring them again unto the land which thou gavest to them and to their fathers. For the heaven is shut up, and there is no rain, because they have sinned against thee. Yet, if they pray toward this place, and confess thy name, and turn from their sin, when thou dost afflict them, then hear thou from heaven, and forgive the sin of thy servants, and of thy people Israel, when thou hast taught them the good way, wherein they should walk, and send rain upon thy land, which thou hast given unto thy people for an inheritance. If there be dearth in the land, if there be pestilence, if there be blasting, or mildew, locusts, or caterpillars, if their enemies besiege them in the cities of their land, whatsoever sore, or whatsoever sickness there be, then what prayer or what supplication soever shall be made of any man, or of all thy people Israel, when every one shall know his own sore and his own grief, and shall spread forth his hands in this house, then hear thou from heaven thy dwelling place, and forgive and render unto every man according unto all his ways, whose heart thou knowest. For thou only knowest the hearts of the children of men. 
they may fear thee to walk in thy ways so long as they live in the land which thou gavest unto our fathers. Moreover, concerning the stranger which is not of thy people Israel, but is come from a far country, for thy great name's sake, and thy mighty hand, and thy stretched out arm, if they come and pray in this house, then hear thou from the heavens, even from thy dwelling place, and do according to all that the stranger calleth to thee for, that all people of the earth may know thy name, and fear thee, as doth thy people Israel, and may know that this house which I have built is called by thy name. If thy people go out to war against their enemies by the way that thou shalt send them, and they pray unto thee toward this city which thou hast chosen, and the house which I have built for thy name, then hear thou from the heavens their prayer and their supplication, and maintain their cause. If they sin against thee, for there is no man which sinneth not, and thou be angry with them, and deliver them over before their enemies, and they carry them away captives unto a land far off or near. Yet, if they bethink themselves in the land whither they are carried captive, and turn and pray unto thee in the land of their captivity, saying, We have sinned, we have done amiss, and have dealt wickedly. If they return to thee with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their captivity, whither they have carried them captives, and pray toward their land, which thou gavest unto their fathers, and toward the city which thou hast chosen, and toward the house which I have built for thy name, then hear thou from the heavens, even from thy dwelling place, their prayer and their supplications, and maintain their cause, and forgive thy people which have sinned against thee. Now, my God, let, I beseech thee, thine eyes be open, and let thine ears be attent unto the prayer that is made in this place. Now, therefore, Arise, O Lord God, in thy resting place, thou and the ark of thy strength. Let thy priests, O Lord God, be clothed with salvation, and let thy saints rejoice in goodness. O Lord God, turn not away the face of thine anointed. Remember the mercies of David thy servant. Chapter 7 Now when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the house. And the priests could not enter into the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. And when all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord upon the house, they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement and worshipped and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Then the king and all the people offered sacrifices before the Lord. And King Solomon offered a sacrifice of twenty and two thousand oxen and an hundred and twenty thousand sheep. So the king and all the people dedicated the house of God. And the priests waited on their offices. The Levites also, with instruments of music of the Lord, which David the king had made to praise the Lord, because his mercy endureth forever, when David praised by their ministry. And the priests sounded trumpets before them, and all Israel stood. Moreover, Solomon hallowed the middle of the court that was before the house of the Lord, for there he offered burnt offerings and the fat of the peace offerings, because the brazen altar which Solomon had made was not able to receive the burnt offerings and the meat offerings and the fat. Also at the same time Solomon kept the feast seven days, and all Israel with him, a very great congregation, from the entering in of Hamath unto the river of Egypt. And in the eighth day they made a solemn assembly, for they kept the dedication of the altar seven days, and the feast seven days. And on the three and twentieth day of the seventh month, he sent the people away into their tents, glad and merry in heart, for the goodness that the Lord had showed unto David, and to Solomon, and to Israel his people. Thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord, and the king's house. And all that came into Solomon's heart to make in the house of the Lord, and in his own house, he prosperously effected. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night, and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer, and have chosen this place to myself for an house of sacrifice. If I shut up heaven that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. Now mine eyes shall be open, and mine ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. 
For now have I chosen and sanctified this house, that my name may be there forever, and mine eyes and mine heart shall be there perpetually. And as for thee, if thou wilt walk before me as David thy father walked, and do according to all that I have commanded thee, and shalt observe my statutes and my judgments, then will I establish the throne of thy kingdom, according as I have covenanted with David thy father, saying, There shall not fail thee a man to be ruler in Israel. But if ye turn away, and forsake my statutes and my commandments which I have set before you, and shalt go and serve other gods, and worship them, then will I pluck them up by the roots out of my land which I have given them. And this house, which I have sanctified for my name, will I cast out of my sight, and will make it to be a proverb and a byword among all nations. And this house, which is high, shall be an astonishment to every one that passeth by it, so that he shall say, Why hath the Lord done thus unto this land and unto this house? And it shall be answered, Because they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, and laid hold on other gods, and worshipped them, and served them. Therefore, hath he brought all this evil upon them. Chapter 8 And it came to pass at the end of twenty years, wherein Solomon had built the house of the Lord in his own house, that the cities which Huram had restored to Solomon, Solomon built them, and caused the children of Israel to dwell there. And Solomon went to Hamath Zobah, and prevailed against it. And he built Tadmor in the wilderness, and all the store cities which he built in Hamath. Also he built Beth Horam the upper, and Beth Horam the nether, fenced cities with walls, gates, and bars, and Baalath, and all the store cities that Solomon had, and all the chariot cities, and the cities of the horsemen, and all that Solomon desired to build in Jerusalem, and in Lebanon, and throughout all the land of his dominion. As for all the people that were left of the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, which were not of Israel, but of their children, who were left after them in the land whom the children of Israel consumed not, then did Solomon make to pay tribute until this day. But of the children of Israel did Solomon make no servants for his work. But they were men of war, and chief of his captains, and captains of his chariots and horsemen. And these were the chief of King Solomon's officers, even two hundred and fifty, that bear rule over the people. And Solomon brought up the daughter of Pharaoh out of the city of David, unto the house that he had built for her. For he said, My wife shall not dwell in the house of David, king of Israel, because the places are holy, whereunto the ark of the Lord hath come. Then Solomon offered burnt offerings unto the Lord on the altar of the Lord, which he had built before the porch, even after a certain rate every day, offering according to the commandment of Moses, on the Sabbaths, and on the new moons, and on the solemn feasts, three times in the year, even in the feast of unleavened bread, and in the feast of weeks, and in the feast of tabernacles. And he appointed, according to the order of David his father, the courses of the priests to their service and the Levites to their charges, to praise and minister before the priests, as the duty of every day required. The porters also by their courses at every gate, for so had David the man of God commanded. And they departed not from the commandment of the king unto the priests and Levites, concerning any matter or concerning the treasures. Now all the work of Solomon was prepared unto the day of the foundation of the house of the Lord, and until it was finished. So the house of the Lord was perfected. Then went Solomon to Ezion Geber, and to Eloth, at the seaside in the land of Edom. And Huram sent him by the hands of his servants, ships, and servants that had knowledge of the sea. And they went with the servants of Solomon to Ophir, and took thence four hundred and fifty talents of gold, and brought them to King Solomon. Chapter 9 And when the queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon, she came to prove Solomon with hard questions at Jerusalem with a very great company, and camels that bear spices and gold in abundance and precious stones. And when she was come to Solomon, she communed with him of all that was in her heart. And Solomon told her all her questions, and there was nothing hid from Solomon, which he told her not. And when the queen of Sheba had seen the wisdom of Solomon, and the house that he had built, and the meat of his table, and the sitting of his servants, and the attendance of his ministers, and their apparel, his cupbearers also, and their apparel, and his ascent by which he went up into the house of the Lord, there was no more spirit in her. And she said to the king, It was a true report which I heard in mine own land of thine acts and of thy wisdom. Albeit I believed not their words until I came, and mine eyes had seen it. And behold, the one half of the greatness of thy wisdom was not told me. For thou exceedest the fame that I heard. 
Happy are thy men, and happy are these thy servants, which stand continually before thee and hear thy wisdom. Blessed be the Lord thy God, which delighted in thee to set thee on his throne, to be king for the Lord thy God. Because thy God loved Israel, to establish them forever, therefore made he thee king over them, to do judgment and justice. And she gave the king an hundred and twenty talents of gold, and of spices great abundance, and precious stones. Neither was there any such spice as the queen of Sheba gave King Solomon. And the servants also of Huram, and the servants of Solomon, which brought gold from Ophir, brought algum trees and precious stones. And the king made of the algum trees terraces to the house of the Lord, and to the king's palace, and harps and psalteries for singers. And there were none such seen before in the land of Judah. And King Solomon gave to the queen of Sheba all her desire, whatsoever she asked, beside that which she had brought unto the king. So she turned and went away to her own land, she and her servants. Now the weight of gold that came to Solomon in one year was six hundred and three score and six talents of gold, beside that which chapmen and merchants brought. And all the kings of Arabia and governors of the country brought gold and silver to Solomon. And King Solomon made two hundred targets of beaten gold, Six hundred shekels of beaten gold went to one target, and three hundred shields made he of beaten gold. Three hundred shekels of gold went to one shield, and the king put them in the house of the forest of Lebanon. Moreover, the king made a great throne of ivory, and overlaid it with pure gold. And there were six steps to the throne, with a footstool of gold, which were fastened to the throne, and stays on each side of the sitting place, and two lions standing by the stays. And twelve lions stood there on the one side and on the other upon the six steps. There was not the like made in any kingdom. And all the drinking vessels of King Solomon were of gold, and all the vessels of the house of the forest of Lebanon were of pure gold. None were of silver. It was not anything accounted of in the days of Solomon. For the king's ships went to Tarshish with the servants of Huram. Every three years once came the ships of Tarshish, bringing gold and silver, ivory and apes and peacocks. King Solomon passed all the kings of the earth in riches and wisdom. And all the kings of the earth sought the presence of Solomon to hear his wisdom that God had put in his heart. And they brought every man his present, vessels of silver and vessels of gold, and raiment, harness, and spices, horses and mules, a rate year by year. And Solomon had four thousand stalls for horses and chariots, and twelve thousand horsemen, whom he bestowed in the chariot cities and with the king of Jerusalem. And he reigned over all the kings, from the river even unto the land of the Philistines, and to the border of Egypt. And the king made silver in Jerusalem as stones, and cedar trees made he as the sycamore trees that are in the low plains in abundance. And they brought unto Solomon horses out of Egypt, and out of all lands. Now the rest of the acts of Solomon first and last, are they not written in the book of Nathan the prophet, and in the prophecy of Ahijah the Shilonite? and in the visions of Iddo the seer against Jeroboam the son of Nebat. And Solomon reigned in Jerusalem over all Israel forty years. And Solomon slept with his fathers, and he was buried in the city of David his father. And Rehoboam his son reigned in his stead. Chapter 10 And Rehoboam went to Shechem, for to Shechem were all Israel come to make him king. And it came to pass, when Jeroboam the son of Nebat, who was in Egypt, whither he had fled from the presence of Solomon the king, heard it, that Jeroboam returned out of Egypt. And they sent and called him. So Jeroboam and all Israel came and spake to Rehoboam, saying, Thy father made our yoke grievous. Now therefore ease thou somewhat the grievous servitude of thy father, and his heavy yoke that he put upon us, and we will serve thee. And he said unto them, Come again unto me after three days. And the people departed. And King Rehoboam took counsel with the old men that had stood before Solomon his father while he yet lived, saying, What counsel give ye me to return answer to this people? And they spake unto him, saying, If thou be kind to this people, and please them, and speak good words to them, they will be thy servants forever. But he forsook the counsel which the old men gave him, and took counsel with the young men that were brought up with him, that stood before him. And he said unto them, What advice give ye that we may return answer to this people which have spoken to me, saying, Ease somewhat the yoke that thy father did put upon us? And the young men that were brought up with him spake unto him, saying, Thus shalt thou answer the people that spake unto thee, saying, Thy father made our yoke heavy, but make thou it somewhat lighter for us. Thus shalt thou say unto them, My little finger shall be thicker than my father's loins. 
For whereas my father put a heavy yoke upon you, I will put more to your yoke. My father chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam on the third day, as the king bade, saying, Come again to me on the third day. And the king answered them roughly. And king Rehoboam forsook the counsel of the old men, and answered them after the advice of the young men, saying, My father made your yoke heavy, but I will add thereto. My father chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. So the king hearkened not unto the people, for the cause was of God that the Lord might perform his word, which he spake by the hand of Ahijah the Shilonite, to Jeroboam the son of Nebat. And when all Israel saw that the king would not hearken unto them, the people answered the king, saying, What portion have we in David? And we have none inheritance in the son of Jesse. Every man to your tents, O Israel. And now, David, see to thine own house. So all Israel went to their tents. But as for the children of Israel that dwelt in the cities of Judah, Rehoboam reigned over them. Then king Rehoboam sent Hadoram that was over the tribute, and the children of Israel stoned him with stones that he died. But king Rehoboam made speed to get him up to his chariot to flee to Jerusalem. And Israel rebelled against the house of David unto this day. Chapter 11 And when Rehoboam was come to Jerusalem, he gathered of the house of Judah and Benjamin an hundred and fourscore thousand chosen men which were warriors to fight against Israel, that he might bring the kingdom again to Rehoboam. But the word of the Lord came to Shemaiah, the man of God, saying, Speak unto Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, king of Judah, and to all Israel in Judah and Benjamin, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Ye shall not go up, nor fight against your brethren. Return every man to his house, for this thing is done of me. And they obeyed the words of the Lord, and returned from going against Jeroboam. And Rehoboam dwelt in Jerusalem, and built cities for defense in Judah. He built even Bethlehem, and Etam, and Tekoa, and Bethzer, and Shoko, and Adullam, and Gath, and Marisha, and Ziph, and Adoraim, and Lachish, and Azekah, and Zorah, and Aijalon, and Hebron, which are in Judah and in Benjamin fenced cities. And he fortified the strongholds, and put captains in them, and store of victual and of oil and wine. And in every several city he put shields and spears, and made them exceeding strong, having Judah and Benjamin on his side. And the priests and the Levites that were in all Israel resorted to him out of all their coasts. For the Levites left their suburbs and their possession and came to Judah and Jerusalem. For Jeroboam and his sons had cast them off from executing the priest's office unto the Lord. And he ordained him priests for the high places and for the devils and for the calves which he had made. And after them, out of all the tribes of Israel, such as set their hearts to seek the Lord God of Israel came to Jerusalem to sacrifice unto the Lord God of their fathers. So they strengthened the kingdom of Judah, and made Rehoboam the son of Solomon strong three years. For three years they walked in the way of David and Solomon. And Rehoboam took him Mahalath, the daughter of Jeremoth, the son of David, to wife, and Abihail, the daughter of Eliab, the son of Jesse, which bare him children, Jeush and Shamariah and Zaham. And after her he took Maacah, the daughter of Absalom, which bare him Abijah and Atai and Ziza and Shalomith. And Rehoboam loved Maacah, the daughter of Absalom, above all his wives and his concubines. For he took eighteen wives and threescore concubines, and begat twenty and eight sons and threescore daughters. And Rehoboam made Abijah, the son of Maacah, the chief, to be ruler among his brethren, for he thought to make him king. And he dealt wisely, and dispersed of all his children throughout all the countries of Judah and Benjamin unto every fenced city. And he gave them victual in abundance, and he desired many wives. Chapter 12 And it came to pass, when Rehoboam had established the kingdom, and had strengthened himself, he forsook the law of the Lord, and all Israel with him. And it came to pass, that in the fifth year of King Rehoboam, Shishak, king of Egypt, came up against Jerusalem, because they had transgressed against the Lord, with twelve hundred chariots, and threescore thousand horsemen. And the people were without number that came with him out of Egypt, the Ubims, the Succians, and the Ethiopians. And he took the fenced cities which pertained to Judah, and came to Jerusalem. Then came Shemaiah the prophet to Rehoboam, and to the princes of Judah that were gathered together to Jerusalem because of Shishak, and said unto them, Thus saith the Lord, Ye have forsaken me, and therefore have I also left you in the hand of Shishak. Whereupon the princes of Israel and the king humbled themselves, and they said, The Lord is righteous. And when the Lord saw that they humbled themselves, 
The word of the Lord came to Shemaiah, saying, They have humbled themselves, therefore I will not destroy them, but I will grant them some deliverance, and my wrath shall not be poured out upon Jerusalem by the hand of Shishak. Nevertheless, they shall be his servants, that they may know my service and the service of the kingdoms of the countries. So Shishak king of Egypt came up against Jerusalem and took away the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king's house. He took all. He carried away also the shields of gold which Solomon had made, instead of which King Rehoboam made shields of brass and committed them to the hands of the chief of the guard that kept the entrance of the king's house. And when the king entered into the house of the Lord, the guard came and fetched them and brought them again into the guard chamber. And when he humbled himself, the wrath of the Lord turned from him that he would not destroy him altogether. And also in Judah things went well. So King Rehoboam strengthened himself in Jerusalem and reigned. For Rehoboam was one and forty years old when he began to reign, and he reigned seventeen years in Jerusalem, the city which the Lord had chosen out of all the tribes of Israel to put his name there. And his mother's name was Naamah, an Ammonitess. And he did evil, because he prepared not his heart to seek the Lord. Now the acts of Rehoboam first and last, are they not written in the book of Shemaiah the prophet, and of Iddo the seer, concerning genealogies? And there were wars between Rehoboam and Jeroboam continually. And Rehoboam slept with his fathers and was buried in the city of David. And Abijah his son reigned in his stead. Chapter 13 Now in the eighteenth year of King Jeroboam began Abijah to reign over Judah. He reigned three years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Micaiah, the daughter of Uriel of Gibeah. And there was war between Abijah and Jeroboam. And Abijah set the battle in array with an army of valiant men of war, even four hundred thousand chosen men. Jeroboam also set the battle in array against him, with eight hundred thousand chosen men, being mighty men of valor. And Abijah stood up upon Mount Zemaraim, which is in Mount Ephraim, and said, Hear me, thou Jeroboam, and all Israel. Ought ye not to know that the Lord God of Israel gave the kingdom over Israel to David forever, even to him and to his sons, by a covenant of salt? Yet Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, the servant of Solomon, the son of David, is risen up and hath rebelled against his Lord. And there are gathered unto him vain men, the children of Belial, and have strengthened themselves against Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, when Rehoboam was young and tender-hearted and could not withstand them. And now ye think to withstand the kingdom of the Lord in the hand of the sons of David, and ye be a great multitude, and there are with you golden calves, which Jeroboam made you for gods. Have ye not cast out the priests of the Lord, the sons of Aaron and the Levites, and have made you priests after the manner of the nations of other lands, so that whosoever cometh to consecrate himself with the young bullock and seven rams, the same may be a priest of them that are no gods? But as for us, the Lord is our God, and we have not forsaken him. And the priests which minister unto the Lord are the sons of Aaron, and the Levites wait upon their business. And they burn unto the Lord every morning and every evening burnt sacrifices and sweet incense. The showbread also set they in order upon the pure table, and the candlestick of gold with the lamps thereof to burn every evening. For we keep the charge of the Lord our God, but ye have forsaken him. And behold, God himself is with us for our captain, and his priests with sounding trumpets to cry alarm against you. O children of Israel, fight ye not against the Lord God of your fathers, for ye shall not prosper. But Jeroboam caused an ambushment to come about behind them. So they were before Judah, and the ambushment was behind them. And when Judah looked back, behold, the battle was before and behind. And they cried unto the Lord, and the priests sounded with the trumpets. Then the men of Judah gave a shout, and as the men of Judah shouted, it came to pass that God smote Jeroboam and all Israel before Abijah and Judah. And the children of Israel fled before Judah, and God delivered them into their hand. And Abijah and his people slew them with a great slaughter, so there fell down slain of Israel five hundred thousand chosen men. Thus the children of Israel were brought under at that time, and the children of Judah prevailed, because they relied upon the Lord God of their fathers. And Abijah pursued after Jeroboam, and took cities from him, Bethel with the towns thereof, and Jeshana with the towns thereof, and Ephraim with the towns thereof. Neither did Jeroboam recover strength again in the days of Abijah. And the Lord struck him, and he died. But Abijah waxed mighty, and married fourteen wives, and begat twenty and two sons and sixteen daughters. 
The rest of the acts of Abijah and his ways and his sayings are written in the story of the prophet Iddo. Chapter 14 So Abijah slept with his fathers, and they buried him in the city of David, and Asa his son reigned in his stead. In his days the land was quiet ten years. And Asa did that which was good and right in the eyes of the Lord his God, for he took away the altars of the strange gods and the high places, and brake down the images, and cut down the groves, and commanded Judah to seek the Lord God of their fathers, and to do the law and the commandment. Also he took away out of all the cities of Judah the high places and the images, and the kingdom was quiet before him. And he built fenced cities in Judah, for the land had rest, and he had no war in those years, because the Lord had given him rest. Therefore he said unto Judah, Let us build these cities, and make about them walls and towers, gates and bars, while the land is yet before us, because we have sought the Lord our God. We have sought him, and he hath given us rest on every side. So they built and prospered. And Asa had an army of men that bear targets and spears, out of Judah three hundred thousand, and out of Benjamin that bear shields and drew bows two hundred and fourscore thousand. All these were mighty men of valor. And there came out against them Zerah the Ethiopian, with an host of a thousand thousand, and three hundred chariots, and came unto Marisha. Then Asa went out against him, and they set the battle in array in the valley of Zephathah at Marisha. And Asa cried unto the Lord his God, and said, Lord, it is nothing with thee to help, whether with many or with them that have no power. Help us, O Lord our God, for we rest on thee, and in thy name we go against this multitude. O Lord, thou art our God, let not man prevail against thee. So the Lord smote the Ethiopians before Asa and before Judah, and the Ethiopians fled. And Asa and the people that were with him pursued them unto Gerar, and the Ethiopians were overthrown, that they could not recover themselves. For they were destroyed before the Lord and before his host. And they carried away very much spoil, and they smote all the cities round about Gerar, for the fear of the Lord came upon them. And they spoiled all the cities, for there was exceeding much spoil in them. They smote also the tents of cattle, and carried away sheep and camels in abundance, and returned to Jerusalem. Chapter 15 And the Spirit of God came upon Azariah the son of Oded. And he went out to meet Asa, and said unto him, Hear ye me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you, while ye be with him. And if ye seek him, he will be found of you. But if ye forsake him, he will forsake you. Now for a long season, Israel hath been without the true God, and without a teaching priest, and without law. But when they in their trouble did turn unto the Lord God of Israel, and sought him, he was found of them. And in those times there was no peace to him that went out, nor to him that came in, but great vexations were upon all the inhabitants of the countries, and nation was destroyed of nation, and city of city, for God did vex them with all adversity. Be ye strong, therefore, and let not your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. And when Asa heard these words and the prophecy of Oded the prophet, he took courage and put away the abominable idols out of all the land of Judah and Benjamin, and out of the cities which he had taken from Mount Ephraim, and renewed the altar of the Lord that was before the porch of the Lord. And he gathered all Judah and Benjamin and the strangers with them out of Ephraim and Manasseh and out of Simeon, for they fell to him out of Israel in abundance when they saw that the Lord his God was with him. So they gathered themselves together at Jerusalem in the third month, in the fifteenth year of the reign of Asa. And they offered unto the Lord the same time of the spoil which they had brought, seven hundred oxen and seven thousand sheep. And they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart and with all their soul, that whosoever would not seek the Lord God of Israel should be put to death, whether small or great, whether man or woman. And they swear unto the Lord with a loud voice and with shouting and with trumpets and with cornets. And all Judah rejoiced at the oath. For they had sworn with all their heart, and sought him with their whole desire, and he was found of them, and the Lord gave them rest round about. And also concerning Maacah, the mother of Asa the king, he removed her from being queen, because she had made an idol in a grove. And Asa cut down her idol, and stamped it, and burnt it at the brook Kidron. But the high places were not taken away out of Israel. Nevertheless, the heart of Asa was perfect all his days. And he brought into the house of God the things that his father had dedicated, and that he himself had dedicated, silver and gold and vessels. And there was no more war until the five and thirtieth year of the reign of Asa. Chapter 16 In the six and thirtieth year of the reign of Asa, 
Baasha, king of Israel, came up against Judah, and built Ramah to the intent that he might let none go out or come into Asa, king of Judah. Then Asa brought out silver and gold out of the treasures of the house of the Lord and of the king's house, and sent to Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, that dwelt at Damascus, saying, There is a league between me and thee, as there was between my father and thy father. Behold, I have sent thee silver and gold. Go, break thy league with Baasha, king of Israel, that he may depart from me. And Ben-Hadad hearkened unto king Asa, and sent the captains of his armies against the cities of Israel. And they smote Ijon, and Dan, and Abel-Mahim, and all the store cities of Naphtali. And it came to pass when Baasha heard it, that he left off building of Ramah, and let his work cease. Then Asa the king took all Judah, and they carried away the stones of Ramah, and the timber thereof, wherewith Baasha was building, and he built therewith Geba and Mizpah. And at that time Hanani the seer came to Asa king of Judah, and said unto him, Because thou hast relied on the king of Syria, and not relied on the Lord thy God, therefore is the host of the king of Syria escaped out of thine hand. Were not the Ethiopians and the Lubims a huge host, with very many chariots and horsemen? Yet because thou didn't rely on the Lord, he delivered them into thine hand. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth, to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. Herein thou hast done foolishly. Therefore from henceforth thou shalt have wars. Then Asa was wroth with the seer, and put him in a prison house but he was in a rage with him because of this thing. And Asa oppressed some of the people at the same time. And behold, the acts of Asa first and last, lo, they are written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. And Asa, in the thirty and ninth year of his reign, was diseased in his feet, until his disease was exceeding great. Yet in his disease he sought not to the Lord, but to the physicians. And Asa slept with his fathers, and died in the one and fortieth year of his reign. And they buried him in his own sepulchres, which he had made for himself in the city of David, and laid him in the bed which was filled with sweet odors and divers kinds of spices prepared by the apothecary's art. And they made a very great burning for him. Chapter 17 And Jehoshaphat his son reigned in his stead, and strengthened himself against Israel. And he placed forces in all the fenced cities of Judah, and set garrisons in the land of Judah, and in the cities of Ephraim, which Asa his father had taken. And the Lord was with Jehoshaphat, because he walked in the first ways of his father David, and sought not unto Baalim, but sought to the Lord God of his father, and walked in his commandments, and not after the doings of Israel. Therefore the Lord established the kingdom in his hand, and all Judah brought to Jehoshaphat presents, and he had riches and honor in abundance. And his heart was lifted up in the ways of the Lord. Moreover, he took away the high places and groves out of Judah. Also in the third year of his reign he sent to his princes, even to Ben-Hael and to Obadiah and to Zechariah and to Nethanel and to Micaiah, to teach in the cities of Judah. And with them he sent Levites, even Shemaiah and Nethaniah and Zebediah and Asahel and Shemiramoth and Jehonathan and Adonijah and Tobijah and Tob-Adonijah, Levites, and with them Elishama and Jehoram priests. And they taught in Judah, and had the book of the law of the Lord with them, and went about throughout all the cities of Judah, and taught the people. And the fear of the Lord fell upon all the kingdoms of the lands that were round about Judah, so that they made no war against Jehoshaphat. Also some of the Philistines brought Jehoshaphat presents and tribute silver, and the Arabians brought him flocks, seven thousand and seven hundred rams, and seven thousand and seven hundred he-goats. And Jehoshaphat waxed great exceedingly, and he built in Judah castles and cities of store. And he had much business in the cities of Judah, and the men of war, mighty men of valor, were in Jerusalem. And these are the numbers of them according to the house of their fathers. Of Judah, the captains of thousands, Adna the chief, and with him mighty men of valor, three hundred thousand. And next to him was Jehohanan the captain, and with him two hundred and fourscore thousand. And next to him was Amasiah the son of Zichri, who willingly offered himself unto the Lord, and with him two hundred thousand mighty men of valor. And of Benjamin, Eliada, a mighty man of valor, and with him armed men with bow and shield, two hundred thousand. And next to him was Jehozabad, and with him an hundred and fourscore thousand ready prepared for the war. These waited on the king, beside those whom the king put in the fenced cities throughout all Judah. Chapter 18 now Jehoshaphat had riches and honor in abundance, and joined affinity with Ahab. 
And after certain years he went down to Ahab to Samaria, and Ahab killed sheep and oxen for him in abundance and for the people that he had with him, and persuaded him to go up with him to Ramoth Gilead. And Ahab king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat king of Judah, Wilt thou go with me to Ramoth Gilead? And he answered him, I am as thou art, and my people as thy people, and we will be with thee in the war. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. Therefore the king of Israel gathered together of prophets four hundred men, and said unto them, Shall we go to Ramoth-Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And they said, Go up, for God will deliver it into the king's hand. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord besides that we might inquire of him? And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man by whom we may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him, for he never prophesied good unto me, but always evil. The same is Micaiah the son of Imlah. And Jehoshaphat said, Let not the king say so. And the king of Israel called for one of his officers and said, Fetch quickly Micaiah the son of Imlah. And the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat king of Judah sat either of them on his throne clothed in their robes, and they sat in a void place at the entering in of the gate of Samaria, and all the prophets prophesied before them. And Zedekiah the son of Canaanah had made him horns of iron, and said, Thus saith the Lord, With these thou shalt push Syria until they be consumed. And all the prophets prophesied so, saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. And the messenger that went to call Micaiah spake to him, saying, Behold, the words of the prophets declare good to the king with one assent. Let thy word, therefore, I pray thee, be like one of theirs, and speak thou good. And Micaiah said, As the Lord liveth, even what my God saith, that will I speak. And when he was come to the king, the king said unto him, Micaiah, shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And he said, Go ye up and prosper, and they shall be delivered into your hand. And the king said to him, How many times shall I adjure thee, that thou say nothing but the truth to me in the name of the Lord? Then he said, I did see all Israel scattered upon the mountains, as sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, These had no master, let them return therefore every man to his house in peace. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell thee that he would not prophesy good unto me, but evil? Again he said, Therefore hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting upon his throne, and all the host of heaven standing on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, Who shall entice Ahab king of Israel, that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one spake, saying after this manner, and another saying after that manner. Then there came out a spirit, and stood before the Lord, and said, I will entice him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And the Lord said, Thou shalt entice him, and thou shalt also prevail. Go out and do even so. Now therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of these thy prophets, and the Lord hath spoken evil against thee. Then Zedekiah the son of Canaanah came near and smote Micaiah upon the cheek, and said, Which way went the Spirit of the Lord from me to speak unto thee? And Micaiah said, Behold, thou shalt see, on that day when thou shalt go into an inner chamber to hide thyself. Then the king of Israel said, Take ye Micaiah, and carry him back to Ammon, the governor of the city, and to Joash, the king's son, and say, Thus saith the king, Put this fellow in the prison, and feed him with bread of affliction and with water of affliction, until I return in peace. And Micaiah said, If thou certainly return in peace, then hath not the Lord spoken by me. And he said, Hearken, all ye people. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat the king of Judah went up to Ramoth Gilead. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, I will disguise myself, and will go to the battle, but put thou on thy robe. For the king of Israel disguised himself, and they went to the battle. Now the king of Syria had commanded the captains of the chariots that were with him, saying, Fight ye not with small or great, save only with the king of Israel. And it came to pass, when the captains of the chariots saw Jehoshaphat, that they said, It is the king of Israel. Therefore they compassed about him to fight. But Jehoshaphat cried out, and the Lord helped him, and God moved them to depart from him. For it came to pass that when the captains of the chariots perceived that it was not the king of Israel, they turned back again from pursuing him. And a certain man drew a bow at a venture, and smote the king of Israel between the joints of the harness. Therefore he said to his chariot man, Turn thine hand, that thou mayest carry me out of the host, for I am wounded. And the battle increased that day. Howbeit the king of Israel stayed himself up in his chariot against the Syrians until the even. 
and about the time of the sun going down, he died. Chapter 19 And Jehoshaphat the king of Judah returned to his house in peace to Jerusalem. And Jehu the son of Hanani the seer went out to meet him, and said to king Jehoshaphat, Shouldest thou help the ungodly, and love them that hate the Lord? Therefore is wrath upon thee from before the Lord. Nevertheless, there are good things found in thee, in that thou hast taken away the groves out of the land, and hast prepared thine heart to seek God. And Jehoshaphat dwelt at Jerusalem, and he went out again through the people from Beersheba to Mount Ephraim, and brought them back unto the Lord God of their fathers. And he set judges in the land throughout all the fenced cities of Judah, city by city, and said to the judges, Take heed what ye do, for ye judge not for man, but for the Lord who is with you in the judgment. Wherefore now, let the fear of the Lord be upon you. Take heed and do it. For there is no iniquity with the Lord our God, nor respect of persons, nor taking of gifts. Moreover, in Jerusalem did Jehoshaphat set of the Levites and of the priests and of the chief of the fathers of Israel for the judgment of the Lord and for controversies when they returned to Jerusalem. And he charged them, saying, Thus shall ye do in the fear of the Lord, faithfully and with a perfect heart. And what cause soever shall come to you of your brethren that dwell in their cities, between blood and blood, between law and commandment, statutes and judgments, ye shall even warn them that they trespass not against the Lord, and so wrath come upon you and upon your brethren. This do, and ye shall not trespass. And behold, Amariah the chief priest is over you in all matters of the Lord, and Zebediah the son of Ishmael, the ruler of the house of Judah, for all the king's matters. Also the Levites shall be officers before you. Deal courageously, and the Lord shall be with the good. Chapter 20 It came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon, and with them other beside the Ammonites, came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side Syria, and behold, they be in hazes on Tamar, which is in Jedi. And Jehoshaphat feared, and set himself to seek the Lord, and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah they came to seek the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah in Jerusalem, in the house of the Lord, before the new court, and said, O Lord God of our fathers, art not thou God in heaven? And rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen? And in thine hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to withstand thee? Art not thou our God, who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel, and gavest it to the seed of Abraham thy friend forever? And they dwelt therein, and have built thee a sanctuary therein for thy name, saying, If, when evil cometh upon us, as the sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we stand before this house, and in thy presence, for thy name is in this house, and cry unto thee in our affliction, then thou wilt hear and help. And now, behold, the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom thou wouldest not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and destroyed them not, behold, I say, how they reward us to come to cast us out of thy possession which thou hast given us to inherit. O our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us, neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. Then upon Jehaziel the son of Zechariah, the son of Beniah, the son of Jeiel, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, Hearken ye, all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou, King Jehoshaphat. Thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshipping the Lord. And the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and of the children of the Korahites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, 
Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, and that should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army, and to say, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, every one helped to destroy another. And when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude, and behold, they were dead bodies fallen to the earth, and none escaped. And when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil of them, they found among them in abundance both riches with the dead bodies and precious jewels, which they stripped off for themselves more than they could carry away. And they were three days in gathering of the spoil. It was so much. And on the fourth day they assembled themselves in the valley of Bereka, for there they blessed the Lord. Therefore the name of the same place was called the valley of Bereka unto this day. Then they returned, every man of Judah and Jerusalem, and Jehoshaphat in the forefront of them, to go again to Jerusalem with joy. For the Lord had made them to rejoice over their enemies. And they came to Jerusalem with psalteries and harps and trumpets unto the house of the Lord. And the fear of God was on all the kingdoms of those countries when they had heard that the Lord fought against the enemies of Israel. So the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet, for his God gave him rest round about. And Jehoshaphat reigned over Judah. He was thirty and five years old when he began to reign, and he reigned twenty and five years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Azuba, the daughter of Shilhai. And he walked in the way of Asa his father, and departed not from it, doing that which was right in the sight of the Lord. Howbeit the high places were not taken away, for as yet the people had not prepared their hearts unto the God of their fathers. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoshaphat first and last, behold, they are written in the book of Jehu the son of Hanani, who is mentioned in the book of the kings of Israel. And after this did Jehoshaphat king of Judah join himself with Ahaziah king of Israel, who did very wickedly. And he joined himself with him to make ships to go to Tarshish, and they made the ships in on geber then Eliezer, the son of Dodava of Marisha, prophesied against Jehoshaphat, saying, Because thou hast joined thyself with Ahaziah, the Lord hath broken thy works. And the ships were broken, but they were not able to go to Tarshish. Chapter 21 Now Jehoshaphat slept with his fathers, and was buried with his fathers in the city of David. And Jehoram his son reigned in his stead. And he had brethren, the sons of Jehoshaphat, Azariah and Jehiel, and Zechariah, and Azariah, and Michael, and Shephatiah. All these were the sons of Jehoshaphat, king of Israel. And their father gave them great gifts of silver, and of gold, and of precious things, with fenced cities in Judah. But the kingdom gave he to Jehoram, because he was the firstborn. Now when Jehoram was risen up to the kingdom of his father, he strengthened himself, and slew all his brethren with the sword, and divers also of the princes of Israel. Jehoram was thirty and two years old when he began to reign, and he reigned eight years in Jerusalem. And he walked in the way of the kings of Israel, like as did the house of Ahab, for he had the daughter of Ahab to wife, and he wrought that which was evil in the eyes of the Lord. Howbeit the Lord would not destroy the house of David because of the covenant that he had made with David, and as he promised to give a light to him and to his sons forever. In his days the Edomites revolted from under the dominion of Judah and made themselves a king. Then Jehoram went forth with his princes and all his chariots with him, and he rose up by night and smote the Edomites which compassed him in, and the captains of the chariots. So the Edomites revolted from under the hand of Judah unto this day. At the same time also did Libna revolt from under his hand, because he had forsaken the Lord God of his fathers. Moreover, he made high places in the mountains of Judah, and caused the inhabitants of Jerusalem to commit fornication, and compelled Judah thereto. And there came a writing to him from Elijah the prophet, saying, Thus saith the Lord God of David thy father, Because thou hast not walked in the ways of Jehoshaphat thy father, nor in the ways of Asa king of Judah, but hast walked in the way of the kings of Israel, and hast made Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to go a-whoring, like to the whoredoms of the house of Ahab, and also hast slain thy brethren of thy father's house, which were better than thyself, behold, with a great plague will the Lord smite thy people, and thy children, and thy wives, and all thy goods, 
and thou shalt have great sickness by disease of thy bowels, until thy bowels fall out by reason of the sickness day by day. Moreover, the Lord stirred up against Jehoram the spirit of the Philistines and of the Arabians that were near the Ethiopians, and they came up into Judah and break into it, and carried away all the substance that was found in the king's house, and his sons also, and his wives, so that there was never a son left him, save Jehoahaz, the youngest of his sons. And after all this, the Lord smote him in his bowels with an incurable disease. And it came to pass that in process of time, after the end of two years, his bowels fell out by reason of his sickness. So he died of sore diseases, and his people made no burning for him like the burning of his fathers. Thirty and two years old was he when he began to reign, and he reigned in Jerusalem eight years, and departed without being desired. Howbeit, they buried him in the city of David, but not in the sepulchres of the kings. Chapter 22 And the inhabitants of Jerusalem made Ahaziah his youngest son king in his stead. For the band of men that came with the Arabians to the camp had slain all the eldest. So Ahaziah the son of Jehoram king of Judah reigned. Forty and two years old was Ahaziah when he began to reign, and he reigned one year in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Athaliah, the daughter of Omri. He also walked in the ways of the house of Ahab, for his mother was his counselor to do wickedly. Wherefore he did evil in the sight of the Lord, like the house of Ahab. For they were his counselors, after the death of his father, to his destruction. He walked also after their counsel, and went with Jehoram the son of Ahab, king of Israel, to war against Hazael, king of Syria, at Ramoth Gilead, and the Syrians smote Joram. And he returned to be healed in Jezreel because of the wounds which were given him at Ramah when he fought with Hazael king of Syria. And Azariah the son of Jehoram king of Judah went down to see Jehoram the son of Ahab at Jezreel because he was sick. And the destruction of Ahaziah was of God by coming to Joram. For when he was come, he went out with Jehoram against Jehu the son of Nimshai, whom the Lord had anointed to cut off the house of Ahab. And it came to pass that when Jehu was executing judgment upon the house of Ahab and found the princes of Judah and the sons of the brethren of Ahaziah that ministered to Ahaziah, he slew them. And he sought Ahaziah, and they caught him, for he was hid in Samaria, and brought him to Jehu. And when they had slain him, they buried him. Because, said they, he is the son of Jehoshaphat, who sought the Lord with all his heart. So the house of Ahaziah had no power to keep still the kingdom. But when Athaliah the mother of Ahaziah saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the seed royal of the house of Judah. But Jehoshabeth, the daughter of the king, took Joash the son of Ahaziah, and stole him from among the king's sons that were slain, and put him and his nurse in a bedchamber. So Jehoshabeth, the daughter of King Jehoram, the wife of Jehoiada the priest, for she was the sister of Ahaziah, hid him from Athaliah, so that she slew him not. And he was with them, hid in the house of God, six years. And Athaliah reigned over the land. Chapter 23 And in the seventh year Jehoiada strengthened himself, and took the captains of hundreds, Azariah the son of Jeroham, and Ishmael the son of Jehohanan, and Azariah the son of Obed, and Maasiah the son of Adiah, and Elishaphat the son of Zichri, into covenant with him. And they went about in Judah, and gathered the Levites out of all the cities of Judah, and the chief of the fathers of Israel, and they came to Jerusalem. And all the congregation made a covenant with the king in the house of God. And he said unto them, Behold, the king's son shall reign, as the Lord hath said of the sons of David. This is the thing that ye shall do. A third part of you entering on the Sabbath of the priests and of the Levites shall be porters of the doors, and a third part shall be at the king's house, and a third part at the gate of the foundation. And all the people shall be in the courts of the house of the Lord. But let none come into the house of the Lord, save the priests and they that minister of the Levites. They shall go in, for they are holy. But all the people shall keep the watch of the Lord. And the Levites shall compass the king round about, every man with his weapons in his hand. And whosoever else cometh into the house, he shall be put to death. But be ye with the king, when he cometh in, and when he goeth out. So the Levites and all Judah did according to all things that Jehoiada the priest had commanded, and took every man his men that were to come in on the Sabbath with them that were to go out on the Sabbath. For Jehoiada the priest dismissed not the courses. Moreover, Jehoiada the priest delivered to the captains of hundreds spears and bucklers and shields that had been King David's, which were in the house of God. And he set all the people, every man having his weapon in his hand, from the right side of the temple to the left side of the temple, along by the altar and the temple, by the king, round about. Then... They brought out the king's son, and put upon him the crown, and gave him the testimony, and made him king. 
And Jehoiada and his sons anointed him and said, God save the king. Now when Athaliah heard the noise of the people running and praising the king, she came to the people into the house of the Lord, and she looked, and behold, the king stood at his pillar at the entering in, and the princes and the trumpets by the king. And all the people of the land rejoiced and sounded with trumpets, also the singers with instruments of music, and such as taught to sing praise. Then Athaliah rent her clothes and said, Treason! Treason! Then Jehoiada the priest brought out the captains of hundreds that were set over the host, and said unto them, Have her forth of the rangers. And whoso followeth her, let him be slain with the sword. For the priest said, Slay her not in the house of the Lord. So they laid hands on her, and when she was come to the entering of the horse gate by the king's house, they slew her there. And Jehoiada made a covenant between him and between all the people and between the king, that they should be the Lord's people. Then all the people went to the house of Baal and brake it down, and brake his altars and his images in pieces, and slew Matan, the priest of Baal, before the altars. Also Jehoiada appointed the officers of the house of the Lord by the hand of the priests, the Levites, whom David had distributed in the house of the Lord, to offer the burnt offerings of the Lord, as it is written in the law of Moses, with rejoicing and with singing, as it was ordained by David. And he set the porters at the gates of the house of the Lord, that none which was unclean in anything should enter in. And he took the captains of hundreds, and the nobles, and the governors of the people, and all the people of the land, and brought down the king from the house of the Lord, and they came through the high gate into the king's house, and set the king upon the throne of the kingdom. And all the people of the land rejoiced, and the city was quiet, after that they had slain Athaliah with the sword. Chapter 24 Joash was seven years old when he began to reign, and he reigned forty years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Zibiah of Beersheba. And Joash did that which was right in the sight of the Lord all the days of Jehoiada the priest. And Jehoiada took for him two wives, and he begat sons and daughters. And it came to pass after this that Joash was minded to repair the house of the Lord. And he gathered together the priests and the Levites and said to them, Go out unto the cities of Judah and gather of all Israel money to repair the house of your God from year to year, and see that ye hasten the matter. Howbeit the Levites hastened it not. And the king called for Jehoiada the chief, and said unto him, Why hast thou not required of the Levites to bring in out of Judah and out of Jerusalem the collection, according to the commandment of Moses the servant of the Lord, and of the congregation of Israel, for the tabernacle of witness? For the sons of Athaliah, that wicked woman, had broken up the house of God, and also all the dedicated things of the house of the Lord did they bestow upon Baalim. And at the king's commandment they made a chest, and set it without at the gate of the house of the Lord. And they made a proclamation through Judah and Jerusalem to bring in to the Lord the collection that Moses the servant of God laid upon Israel in the wilderness. And all the princes and all the people rejoiced, and brought in, and cast into the chest until they had made an end. Now it came to pass that at what time the chest was brought unto the king's office by the hand of the Levites, and when they saw that there was much money, the king's scribe and the high priest's officer came and emptied the chest, and took it, and carried it to his place again. Thus they did day by day, and gathered money in abundance. And the king and Jehoiada gave it to such as did the work of the service of the house of the Lord, and hired masons and carpenters to repair the house of the Lord, and also such as wrought iron and brass to mend the house of the Lord. So the workmen wrought, and the work was perfected by them, and they set the house of God in his state, and strengthened it. And when they had finished it, they brought the rest of the money before the king and Jehoiada, whereof were made vessels for the house of the Lord, even vessels to minister, and to offer withal and spoons, and vessels of gold and silver. And they offered burnt offerings in the house of the Lord continually all the days of Jehoiada. But Jehoiada waxed old, and was full of days when he died, and hundred and thirty years old was he when he died. And they buried him in the city of David among the kings, because he had done good in Israel, both toward God and toward his house. Now after the death of Jehoiada came the princes of Judah and made obeisance to the king. Then the king hearkened unto them. And they left the house of the Lord God of their fathers, and served groves and idols. And wrath came upon Judah and Jerusalem for this their trespass. Yet he sent prophets to them to bring them again unto the Lord, and they testified against them, but they would not give ear. And the Spirit of God came upon Zechariah the son of Jehoiada the priest, which stood above the people and said unto them, Thus saith God, why transgress ye the commandments of the Lord, that ye cannot prosper? Because ye have forsaken the Lord, he hath also forsaken you. And they conspired against him, and stoned him with stones at the commandment of the king in the court of the house of the Lord. 
Thus Joash the king remembered not the kindness which Jehoiada his father had done him, but slew his son. And when he died, he said, The Lord look upon it and require it. And it came to pass at the end of the year that the host of Syria came up against him, and they came to Judah and Jerusalem, and destroyed all the princes of the people from among the people, and sent all the spoil of them unto the king of Damascus. For the army of the Syrians came with a small company of men. And the Lord delivered a very great host into their hand, because they had forsaken the Lord God of their fathers. So they executed judgment against Joash. And when they were departed from him, for they left him in great diseases, his own servants conspired against him for the blood of the sons of Jehoiada the priest, and slew him on his bed, and he died. And they buried him in the city of David, but they buried him not in the sepulchres of the kings. And these are they that conspired against him, Zabad the son of Shimeath and Ammonitus, and Jehozabad, the son of Shimrith, a Moabitess. Now concerning his sons, and the greatness of the burdens laid upon him, and the repairing of the house of God, behold, they are written in the story of the book of the kings. And Amaziah his son reigned in his stead. Chapter 25 Amaziah was twenty and five years old when he began to reign, and he reigned twenty and nine years in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Jehoadan of Jerusalem. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord but not with a perfect heart. Now it came to pass, when the kingdom was established to him, that he slew his servants that had killed the king his father. But he slew not their children, but did as it is written in the law in the book of Moses, where the Lord commanded, saying, The fathers shall not die for the children, neither shall the children die for the fathers, but every man shall die for his own sin. Moreover, Amaziah gathered Judah together and made them captains over thousands and captains over hundreds, according to the houses of their fathers, throughout all Judah and Benjamin. And he numbered them from twenty years old and above, and found them three hundred thousand choice men, able to go forth to war, that could handle spear and shield. He hired also an hundred thousand mighty men of valor out of Israel, for an hundred talents of silver. But there came a man of God to him, saying, O king, let not the army of Israel go with thee, for the Lord is not with Israel, to wit with all the children of Ephraim. But if thou wilt go, do it, be strong for the battle. God shall make thee fall before the enemy, for God hath power to help and to cast down. And Amaziah said to the man of God, But what shall we do for the hundred talents which I have given to the army of Israel? And the man of God answered, The Lord is able to give thee much more than this. Then Amaziah separated them, to wit the army that was come to him out of Ephraim, to go home again. Wherefore their anger was greatly kindled against Judah, and they returned home in great anger. And Amaziah strengthened himself, and led forth his people, and went to the valley of Salt, and smote of the children of Seir ten thousand. And other ten thousand left alive did the children of Judah carry away captive, and brought them unto the top of the rock, and cast them down from the top of the rock, that they all were broken in pieces. But the soldiers of the army which Amaziah sent back, that they should not go with him to battle, fell upon the cities of Judah, from Samaria even unto Beth Horon, and smote three thousand of them, and took much spoil. Now it came to pass, after that Amaziah was come from the slaughter of the Edomites, that he brought the gods of the children of Seir, and set them up to be his gods, and bowed down himself before them, and burned incense unto them. Wherefore the anger of the Lord was kindled against Amaziah, and he sent unto him a prophet, which said unto him, Why hast thou sought after the gods of the people, which could not deliver their own people out of thine hand? And it came to pass, as he talked with him, that the king said unto him, Art thou made of the king's counsel? Forbear! Why shouldest thou be smitten? Then the prophet forbear and said, I know that God hath determined to destroy thee, because thou hast done this, and hast not hearkened unto my counsel. Then Amaziah king of Judah took advice, and sent to Joash the son of Jehoahaz, the son of Jehu, king of Israel, saying, Come, let us see one another in the face. And Joash king of Israel sent to Amaziah king of Judah, saying, the thistle that was in Lebanon sent to the cedar that was in Lebanon, saying, Give thy daughter to my son to wife. And there passed by a wild beast that was in Lebanon, and trode down the thistle. Thou sayest, Lo, thou hast smitten the Edomites, and thine heart lifteth thee up to boast. Abide now at home. Why shouldest thou meddle to thine hurt, that thou shouldest fall, even thou and Judah with thee? But Amaziah would not hear. For it came of God, that he might deliver them into the hand of their enemies, because they sought after the gods of Edom. So Joash the king of Israel went up, and they saw one another in the face, both he and Amaziah king of Judah, at Beth Shemesh, which belongeth to Judah. And Judah was put to the worst before Israel, and they fled every man to his tent. 
Joash, the king of Israel, took Amaziah, king of Judah, the son of Joash, the son of Jehoahaz, at Beth Shemesh, and brought him to Jerusalem, and break down the wall of Jerusalem from the gate of Ephraim to the corner gate, 400 cubits. And he took all the gold and the silver, and all the vessels that were found in the house of God with Obed-Edom, and the treasures of the king's house, the hostages also, and returned to Samaria. And Amaziah, the son of Joash, king of Judah, lived after the death of Joash, son of Jehoahaz, king of Israel, fifteen years. Now, the rest of the acts of Amaziah, first and last, behold, are they not written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel? Now, after the time that Amaziah did turn away from following the Lord, they made a conspiracy against him in Jerusalem, and he fled to Lachish. But they sent to Lachish after him and slew him there. And they brought him upon horses and buried him with his fathers in the city of Judah. Chapter 26 Then all the people of Judah took Uzziah, who was sixteen years old, and made him king in the room of his father Amaziah. He built Eloth and restored it to Judah, after that the king slept with his fathers. Sixteen years old was Uzziah when he began to reign, and he reigned fifty and two years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Jecoliah of Jerusalem. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father Amaziah did. And he sought God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in the visions of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. And he went forth and warred against the Philistines, and brake down the wall of Gath, and the wall of Jabne, and the wall of Ashdod, and built cities about Ashdod and among the Philistines. And God helped him against the Philistines, and against the Arabians that dwelt in Gerbaal, and the Mehunims. And the Ammonites gave gifts to Uzziah, and his name spread abroad even to the entering in of Egypt, for he strengthened himself exceedingly. Moreover, Uzziah built towers in Jerusalem at the corner gate, and at the valley gate, and at the turning of the wall, and fortified them. Also he built towers in the desert, and digged many wells, for he had much cattle, both in the low country and in the plains, husbandmen also, and vine dressers in the mountains and in Carmel, for he loved husbandry. Moreover, Uzziah had an host of fighting men that went out to war by bands, according to the number of their account by the hand of Jeiel the scribe and Maasiah the ruler, under the hand of Hananiah, one of the king's captains. The whole number of the chief of the fathers of the mighty men of valor were two thousand and six hundred, and under their hand was an army, three hundred thousand and seven thousand and five hundred, that made war with mighty power to help the king against the enemy. And Uzziah prepared for them throughout all the host shields, and spears, and helmets, and haberdashers and bows, and slings to cast stones. And he made in Jerusalem engines invented by cunning men to be on the towers and upon the bulwarks, to shoot arrows and great stones withal. And his name spread far abroad, for he was marvelously helped till he was strong. But when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction. For he transgressed against the Lord his God, and went into the temple of the Lord to burn incense upon the altar of incense. And Azariah the priest went in after him, and with him fourscore priests of the Lord that were valiant men, and they withstood Uzziah the king, and said unto him, It appertaineth not unto thee, Uzziah, to burn incense unto the Lord, but to the priests, the sons of Aaron, that are consecrated to burn incense. Go out of the sanctuary, for thou hast trespassed. Neither shall it be for thine honor from the Lord God. Then Uzziah was wroth, and had a censer in his hand to burn incense, and while he was wroth with the priests, the leprosy even rose up in his forehead before the priests in the house of the Lord from beside the incense altar. And Azariah the chief priest and all the priests looked upon him, and behold, he was leprous in his forehead. And they thrust him out from thence, yea, himself hasted also to go out, because the Lord had smitten him. And Uzziah the king was a leper unto the day of his death, and dwelt in a several house, being a leper. For he was cut off from the house of the Lord. And Jotham his son was over the king's house, judging the people of the land. Now the rest of the acts of Uzziah first and last did Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, write. So Uzziah slept with his fathers, and they buried him with his fathers in the field of the burial which belonged to the kings. For they said, He is a leper. And Jotham his son reigned in his stead. Chapter 27 Jotham was twenty and five years old when he began to reign, and he reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Jerusha, the daughter of Zadok. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father Uzziah did. Howbeit he entered not into the temple of the Lord. And the people did yet corruptly. He built the high gate of the house of the Lord, 
and on the wall of Ophel he built much. Moreover, he built cities in the mountains of Judah, and in the forests he built castles and towers. He fought also with the king of the Ammonites and prevailed against them. And the children of Ammon gave him the same year an hundred talents of silver and ten thousand measures of wheat and ten thousand of barley. So much did the children of Ammon pay unto him both the second year and the third. So Jotham became mighty because he prepared his ways before the Lord his God. Now the rest of the acts of Jotham and all his wars and his ways, lo, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah. He was five and twenty years old when he began to reign, and reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem. And Jotham slept with his fathers, and they buried him in the city of David. And Ahaz his son reigned in his stead. Chapter 28 Ahaz was twenty years old when he began to reign, and he reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem. But he did not that which was right in the sight of the Lord, like David his father, for he walked in the ways of the kings of Israel, and made also molten images for Baalim. Moreover, he burnt incense in the valley of the son of Hinnom, and burnt his children in the fire after the abominations of the heathen whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. He sacrificed also and burnt incense in the high places, and on the hills, and under every green tree. Wherefore, the Lord his God delivered him into the hand of the king of Syria, and they smote him, and carried away a great multitude of them captives, and brought them to Damascus. And he was also delivered into the hand of the king of Israel, who smote him with a great slaughter. For Pekah, the son of Remaliah, slew in Judah an hundred and twenty thousand in one day, which were all valiant men, because they had forsaken the Lord God of their fathers. And Zikri, a mighty man of Ephraim, slew Maasiah, the king's son, and Azrikam, the governor of the house, and Elkanah, that was next to the king. And the children of Israel carried away captive of their brethren two hundred thousand, women, sons, and daughters, and took also away much spoil from them, and brought the spoil to Samaria. But a prophet of the Lord was there, whose name was Oded. And he went out before the host that came to Samaria, and said unto them, Behold, because the Lord God of your fathers was wroth with Judah, he hath delivered them into your hand, and ye have slain them in a rage that reacheth up unto heaven. And now ye purpose to keep under the children of Judah and Jerusalem for bondmen and bondwomen unto you. But are there not with you, even with you, sins against the Lord your God? Now hear me, therefore, and deliver the captives again, which ye have taken captive of your brethren. For the fierce wrath of the Lord is upon you. Then certain of the heads of the children of Ephraim, Azariah the son of Johanan, Berechiah the son of Meshillamoth, and Jehizkiah the son of Shalom, and Amasa the son of Hadlai, stood up against them that came from the war, and said unto them, Ye shall not bring in the captives hither. For whereas we have offended against the Lord already, ye intend to add more to our sins and to our trespass. For our trespass is great, and there is fierce wrath against Israel. So the armed men left the captives and the spoil before the princes and all the congregation. And the men which were expressed by name rose up and took the captives, and with the spoil clothed all that were naked among them, and arrayed them and shod them, and gave them to eat and to drink, and anointed them, and carried all the feeble of them upon asses, and brought them to Jericho, the city of palm trees, to their brethren. Then they returned to Samaria. At that time did King Ahaz send unto the kings of Assyria to help him. For again the Edomites had come and smitten Judah and carried away captives. The Philistines also had invaded the cities of the low country and of the south of Judah, and had taken Beth Shemesh and Agilon and Gediroth and Shoko with the villages thereof, and Timnah with the villages thereof, Gimzo also and the villages thereof, and they dwelt there. For the Lord brought Judah low because of Ahaz king of Israel. For he made Judah naked, and transgressed sore against the Lord. And Tilgath Pilneser, king of Assyria, came unto him, and distressed him, but strengthened him not. For Ahaz took away a portion out of the house of the Lord, and out of the house of the king, and of the princes, and gave it unto the king of Assyria, but he helped him not. And in the time of his distress did he trespass yet more against the Lord. This is that king Ahaz, for he sacrificed unto the gods of Damascus, which smote him. And he said, Because the gods of the kings of Syria help them, therefore will I sacrifice to them, that they may help me. But they were the ruin of him and of all Israel. And Ahaz gathered together the vessels of the house of God, and cut in pieces the vessels of the house of God, and shut up the doors of the house of the Lord, and he made him altars in every corner of Jerusalem. And in every several city of Judah he made high places to burn incense unto other gods, and provoked to anger 
the Lord God of his fathers. Now the rest of his acts and of all his ways, first and last, behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. And Ahaz slept with his fathers, and they buried him in the city, even in Jerusalem. But they brought him not into the sepulchres of the kings of Israel. And Hezekiah his son reigned in his stead. Chapter 29 Hezekiah began to reign when he was five and twenty years old, and he reigned nine and twenty years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Abijah, the daughter of Zechariah. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that David his father had done. He, in the first year of his reign, in the first month, opened the doors of the house of the Lord and repaired them. And he brought in the priests and the Levites, and gathered them together into the east street, and said unto them, Hear me, ye Levites. Sanctify now yourselves, and sanctify the house of the Lord God of your fathers, and carry forth the filthiness out of the holy place. For our fathers have trespassed, and done that which was evil in the eyes of the Lord our God, and have forsaken him, and have turned away their faces from the habitation of the Lord, and turned their backs. Also they have shut up the doors of the porch, and put out the lamps, and have not burned incense, nor offered burnt offerings in the holy place unto the God of Israel. Wherefore the wrath of the Lord was upon Judah and Jerusalem, and he hath delivered them to trouble, to astonishment, and to hissing, as ye see with your eyes. For lo, our fathers have fallen by the sword, and our sons and our daughters and our wives are in captivity for this. Now it is in mine heart to make a covenant with the Lord God of Israel, that his fierce wrath may turn away from us. My sons, be not now negligent, for the Lord hath chosen you to stand before him, to serve him, and that ye should minister unto him, and burn incense. Then the Levites arose, Nahath the son of Amasai, and Joel the son of Azariah, of the sons of the Kohathites, and of the sons of Merari, Kish the son of Abdi, and Azariah the son of Jehalalel, and of the Gershonites, Joah the son of Zimmah, and Eden the son of Joah, and of the sons of Eli Zaphon, Shimri, and Jeiel, and of the sons of Asaph, Zechariah, and Mataniah, and of the sons of Heman, Jehiel, and Shimei, and of the sons of Jeduthun, Shemaiah, and Oziel. And they gathered their brethren, and sanctified themselves, and came according to the commandment of the king by the words of the Lord, to cleanse the house of the Lord. And the priests went into the inner part of the house of the Lord to cleanse it, and brought out all the uncleanness that they found in the temple of the Lord into the court of the house of the Lord. And the Levites took it to carry it out abroad into the brook Kidron. Now they began on the first day of the first month to sanctify, and on the eighth day of the month came they to the porch of the Lord. So they sanctified the house of the Lord in eight days. And in the sixteenth day of the first month they made an end. Then they went in to Hezekiah the king and said, We have cleansed all the house of the Lord and the altar of burnt offering with all the vessels thereof, and the showbread table with all the vessels thereof. Moreover, all the vessels which King Ahaz in his reign did cast away in his transgression have we prepared and sanctified, and behold, they are before the altar of the Lord. Then Hezekiah the king rose early, and gathered the rulers of the city, and went up to the house of the Lord. And they brought seven bullocks, and seven rams, and seven lambs, and seven he-goats, for a sin offering for the kingdom, and for the sanctuary, and for Judah. And he commanded the priests, the sons of Aaron, to offer them on the altar of the Lord. So they killed the bullocks, and the priests received the blood, and sprinkled it on the altar. Likewise, when they had killed the rams, they sprinkled the blood upon the altar. They killed also the lambs, and they sprinkled the blood upon the altar. And they brought forth the he-goats for the sin offering before the king and the congregation, and they laid their hands upon them. And the priests killed them, and they made reconciliation with their blood upon the altar to make an atonement for all Israel. For the king commanded that the burnt offering and the sin offering should be made for all Israel. And he set the Levites in the house of the Lord with cymbals, with psalteries, and with harps, according to the commandment of David, and of Gad the king's seer, and Nathan the prophet. For so was the commandment of the Lord by his prophets. And the Levites stood with the instruments of David, and the priests with the trumpets. And Hezekiah commanded to offer the burnt offering upon the altar. And when the burnt offering began, the song of the Lord began also with the trumpets and with the instruments ordained by David king of Israel. And all the congregation worshipped, and the singers sang, and the trumpeters sounded. And all this continued until the burnt offering was finished. And when they had made an end of offering, the king and all that were present with him bowed themselves and worshipped. Moreover, Hezekiah the king and the princes commanded the Levites to sing praise unto the Lord with the words of David and of Asaph the seer. 
and they sang praises with gladness, and they bowed their heads and worshipped. Then Hezekiah answered and said, Now ye have consecrated yourselves unto the Lord, come near, and bring sacrifices and thank offerings into the house of the Lord. And the congregation brought in sacrifices and thank offerings, and as many as were of a free heart, burnt offerings. And the number of the burnt offerings which the congregation brought was threescore and ten bullocks, an hundred rams and two hundred lambs. All these were for a burnt offering to the Lord. And the consecrated things were six hundred oxen and three thousand sheep. But the priests were too few, so that they could not flay all the burnt offerings. Wherefore their brethren the Levites did help them till the work was ended, and until the other priests had sanctified themselves, for the Levites were more upright in heart to sanctify themselves than the priests. And also the burnt offerings were in abundance, with the fat of the peace offerings and the drink offerings for every burnt offering. So the service of the house of the Lord was set in order. And Hezekiah rejoiced, and all the people, that God had prepared the people. For the thing was done suddenly. Chapter 30 And Hezekiah sent to all Israel and Judah, and wrote letters also to Ephraim and Manasseh, that they should come to the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, to keep the Passover unto the Lord God of Israel. For the king had taken counsel and his princes, and all the congregation in Jerusalem, to keep the Passover in the second month. For they could not keep it at that time, because the priests had not sanctified themselves sufficiently, neither had the people gathered themselves together to Jerusalem. And the thing pleased the king and all the congregation. So they established a decree to make proclamation throughout all Israel, from Beersheba even to Dan, that they should come to keep the Passover unto the Lord God of Israel at Jerusalem. For they had not done it of a long time, in such sort as it was written. So the posts went with the letters from the king and his princes throughout all Israel and Judah, and according to the commandment of the king, saying, Ye children of Israel, turn again unto the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, and he will return to the remnant of you that are escaped out of the hand of the kings of Assyria. And be not ye like your fathers and like your brethren, which trespassed against the Lord God of their fathers, who therefore gave them up to desolation, as ye see. Now be ye not stiff-necked as your fathers were, but yield yourselves unto the Lord, and enter into his sanctuary, which he hath sanctified forever, and serve the Lord your God, that the fierceness of his wrath may turn away from you. For if ye turn again unto the Lord, your brethren and your children shall find compassion before them that lead them captive, so that they shall come again into this land. For the Lord your God is gracious and merciful, and will not turn away his face from you, if ye return unto him. So the posts passed from city to city through the country of Ephraim and Manasseh, even unto Zebulun. But they laughed them to scorn and mocked them. Nevertheless, divers of Asher and Manasseh and of Zebulun humbled themselves and came to Jerusalem. Also in Judah the hand of God was to give them one heart to do the commandment of the king and of the princes by the word of the Lord. And there assembled at Jerusalem much people to keep the feast of unleavened bread in the second month, a very great congregation. And they arose and took away the altars that were in Jerusalem, and all the altars for incense took they away, and cast them into the brook Kidron. Then they killed the Passover on the fourteenth day of the second month, and the priests and the Levites were ashamed, and sanctified themselves, and brought in the burnt offerings into the house of the Lord. And they stood in their place after their manner according to the law of Moses, the man of God. The priests sprinkled the blood which they received of the hand of the Levites. For there were many in the congregation that were not sanctified. Therefore the Levites had the charge of the killing of the Passovers for every one that was not clean to sanctify them unto the Lord. For a multitude of the people, even many of Ephraim and Manasseh, Issachar and Zebulun, had not cleansed themselves. Yet did they eat the Passover otherwise than it was written. But Hezekiah prayed for them, saying, The good Lord, pardon every one that prepareth his heart to seek God, the Lord God of his fathers, though he be not cleansed according to the purification of the sanctuary. And the Lord hearkened to Hezekiah and healed the people. And the children of Israel that were present at Jerusalem kept the feast of unleavened bread seven days with great gladness. And the Levites and the priests praised the Lord day by day, singing with loud instruments unto the Lord. And Hezekiah spake comfortably unto all the Levites that taught the good knowledge of the Lord, and they did eat throughout the feast seven days, offering peace offerings, and making confession to the Lord God of their fathers. And the whole assembly took counsel to keep other seven days, and they kept other seven days with gladness. For Hezekiah king of Judah did give to the congregation a thousand bullocks and seven thousand sheep, 
and the princes gave to the congregation a thousand bullocks and ten thousand sheep, and a great number of priests sanctified themselves. And all the congregation of Judah, with the priests and the Levites, and all the congregation that came out of Israel, and the strangers that came out of the land of Israel and that dwelt in Judah, rejoiced. So there was great joy in Jerusalem. For since the time of Solomon the son of David, king of Israel, there was not the like in Jerusalem. Then the priests, the Levites, arose and blessed the people. And their voice was heard, and their prayer came up to his holy dwelling place, even unto heaven. Chapter 31 Now when all this was finished, all Israel that were present went out to the cities of Judah, and brake the images in pieces, and cut down the groves, and threw down the high places and the altars out of all Judah and Benjamin, in Ephraim also, and Manasseh, until they had utterly destroyed them all. Then all the children of Israel returned, every man to his possession, into their own cities. And Hezekiah appointed the courses of the priests and the Levites after their courses, every man according to his service, the priests and Levites for burnt offerings and for peace offerings, to minister and to give thanks and to praise in the gates of the tents of the Lord. He appointed also the king's portion of his substance for the burnt offerings, to wit, for the morning and evening burnt offerings and the burnt offerings for the Sabbaths and for the new moons and for the set feasts as it is written in the law of the Lord. Moreover, he commanded the people that dwelt in Jerusalem to give the portion of the priests and the Levites, that they might be encouraged in the law of the Lord. And as soon as the commandment came abroad, the children of Israel brought in abundance the first fruits of corn, wine, and oil, and honey, and of all the increase of the field. And the tithe of all things brought they in abundantly. And concerning the children of Israel and Judah that dwelt in the cities of Judah, they also brought in the tithe of oxen and sheep, and the tithe of holy things which were consecrated unto the Lord their God, and laid them by heaps. In the third month they began to lay the foundation of the heaps, and finished them in the seventh month. And when Hezekiah and the princes came and saw the heaps, they blessed the Lord and his people Israel. Then Hezekiah questioned with the priests and the Levites concerning the heaps. And Azariah, the chief priest of the house of Zadok, answered him and said, Since the people began to bring the offerings into the house of the Lord, we have had enough to eat and have left plenty. For the Lord hath blessed his people, and that which is left is this great store. Then Hezekiah commanded to prepare chambers in the house of the Lord, and they prepared them, and brought in the offerings and the tithes and the dedicated things faithfully, over which Conaniah the Levite was ruler, and Shimei his brother was the next. And Jehiel, and Azaziah, and Nahath, and Asahel, and Jeremoth, and Josabad, and Eliel, and Ismachiah, and Mahath, and Benaiah, were overseers under the hand of Conaniah and Shimei his brother, at the commandment of Hezekiah the king, and Azariah the ruler of the house of God. And Cori the son of Imna the Levite, the porter toward the east, was over the free will offerings of God, to distribute the oblations of the Lord, and the most holy things. And next him were Eden, and Miniamin, and Jeshua, and Shemaiah, Amariah, and Shechaniah, in the cities of the priests, in their set office, to give to their brethren by courses, as well to the great as to the small. Beside their genealogy of males, from three years old and upward, even unto every one that entereth into the house of the Lord, his daily portion for their service and their charges according to their courses, both to the genealogy of the priests by the house of their fathers, and the Levites from twenty years old and upward in their charges by their courses, and to the genealogy of all their little ones, their wives and their sons and their daughters, through all the congregation. For in their set office they sanctified themselves in holiness. Also of the sons of Aaron the priests, which were in the fields of the suburbs of their cities, in every several city, the men that were expressed by name, to give portions to all the males among the priests, and to all that were reckoned by genealogies among the Levites. And thus did Hezekiah throughout all Judah, and wrought that which was good and right and truth before the Lord his God. And in every work that he began in the service of the house of God, and in the law, and in the commandments, to seek his God, he did it with all his heart, and prospered. Chapter 32 After these things, and the establishment thereof, Sennacherib king of Assyria came, and entered into Judah, and encamped against the fenced cities, and thought to win them for himself. And when Hezekiah saw that Sennacherib was come, and that he was purposed to fight against Jerusalem, he took counsel with his princes and his mighty men to stop the waters of the fountains which were without the city. And they did help him. So there was gathered much people together who stopped all the fountains and the brook that ran through the midst of the land, saying, Why should the kings of Assyria come and find much water? 
Also, he strengthened himself and built up all the wall that was broken and raised it up to the towers, and another wall without, and repaired Millo in the city of David, and made darts and shields in abundance. And he set captains of war over the people, and gathered them together to him in the street of the gate of the city, and spake comfortably to them, saying, Be strong and courageous. Be not afraid nor dismayed for the king of Assyria, nor for all the multitude that is with him. For there be more with us than with him. With him is an arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. And the people rested themselves upon the words of Hezekiah, king of Judah. After this did Sennacherib, king of Assyria, send his servants to Jerusalem, but he himself laid siege against Lachish and all his power with him. Unto Hezekiah, king of Judah, and unto all Judah that were at Jerusalem, saying, Thus saith Sennacherib, king of Assyria, Whereon do ye trust that ye abide in the siege in Jerusalem? Doth not Hezekiah persuade you to give over yourselves to die by famine and by thirst, saying, The Lord our God shall deliver us out of the hand of the king of Assyria? Hath not the same Hezekiah taken away his high places and his altars, and commanded Judah and Jerusalem, saying, Ye shall worship before one altar, and burn incense upon it? Know ye not what I and my fathers have done unto all the people of other lands? Were the gods of the nations of those lands any ways able to deliver their lands out of mine hand? Who was there among all the gods of those nations that my fathers utterly destroyed, that could deliver his people out of mine hand, that your God should be able to deliver you out of mine hand? Now therefore, let not Hezekiah deceive you, nor persuade you on this manner. Neither yet believe him. For no god of any nation or kingdom was able to deliver his people out of mine hand, and out of the hand of my fathers. How much less shall your God deliver you out of mine hand? And his servants spake yet more against the Lord God, and against his servant Hezekiah. He wrote also letters to rail on the Lord God of Israel, and to speak against him, saying, As the gods of the nations of other lands have not delivered their people out of mine hand, so shall not the God of Hezekiah deliver his people out of mine hand. Then they cried with a loud voice in the Jews' speech unto the people of Jerusalem that were on the wall, to affright them and to trouble them, that they might take the city. And they spake against the God of Jerusalem as against the gods of the people of the earth, which were the work of the hands of man. And for this cause, Hezekiah the king and the prophet Isaiah the son of Amos prayed and cried to heaven. And the Lord sent an angel, which cut off all the mighty men of valor and the leaders and captains in the camp of the king of Assyria. So he returned with shame of face to his own land. And when he was come into the house of his God, they that came forth of his own bowels slew him there with the sword. Thus the Lord saved Hezekiah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem from the hand of Sennacherib the king of Assyria, and from the hand of all other, and guided them on every side. And many brought gifts unto the Lord to Jerusalem, and presents to Hezekiah king of Judah, so that he was magnified in the sight of all nations from thenceforth. In those days Hezekiah was sick to the death, and prayed unto the Lord. And he spake unto him, and he gave him a sign. But Hezekiah rendered not again according to the benefit done unto him, for his heart was lifted up. Therefore there was wrath upon him, and upon Judah and Jerusalem. Notwithstanding, Hezekiah humbled himself for the pride of his heart, both he and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the wrath of the Lord came not upon them in the days of Hezekiah. And Hezekiah had exceeding much riches and honor, and he made himself treasuries for silver and for gold and for precious stones and for spices and for shields and for all manner of pleasant jewels, storehouses also for the increase of corn and wine and oil, and stalls for all manner of beasts and cots for flocks. Moreover, he provided him cities and possessions of flocks and herds in abundance, for God had given him substance very much. This same Hezekiah also stopped the upper water course of Gihon and brought it straight down to the west side of the city of David. And Hezekiah prospered in all his works. Howbeit, in the business of the ambassadors of the princes of Babylon who sent unto him to inquire of the wonder that was done in the land, God left him to try him, that he might know all that was in his heart. Now the rest of the acts of Hezekiah and his goodness, behold, they are written in the vision of Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, and in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. And Hezekiah slept with his fathers, and they buried him in the chiefest of the sepulchres of the sons of David. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem did him honor at his death. And Manasseh his son reigned in his stead.
chapter 33. Manasseh was twelve years old when he began to reign, and he reigned fifty and five years in Jerusalem, but did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, like unto the abominations of the heathen whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. For he built again the high places which Hezekiah his father had broken down, and he reared up altars for Baalim, and made groves, and worshipped all the hosts of heaven, and served them. Also he built altars in the house of the Lord, whereof the Lord had said, In Jerusalem shall my name be forever. And he built altars for all the hosts of heaven in the two courts of the house of the Lord. And he caused his children to pass through the fire in the valley of the son of Hinnom. Also he observed times, and used enchantments, and used witchcraft, and dealt with a familiar spirit and with wizards. He wrought much evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. And he set a carved image, the idol which he had made, in the house of God, of which God had said to David and to Solomon his son, In this house and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen before all the tribes of Israel, will I put my name forever. Neither will I any more remove the foot of Israel from out of the land which I have appointed for your fathers, so that they will take heed to do all that I have commanded them, according to the whole law and the statutes and the ordinances by the hand of Moses. So Manasseh made Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to err, and to do worse than the heathen whom the Lord had destroyed before the children of Israel. And the Lord spake to Manasseh and to his people, but they would not hearken. Wherefore the Lord brought upon them the captains of the host of the king of Assyria, which took Manasseh among the thorns, and bound him with fetters, and carried him to Babylon. And when he was in affliction, he besought the Lord his God, and humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers, and prayed unto him. And he was entreated of him, and heard his supplication, and brought him again to Jerusalem into his kingdom. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord, he was God. Now after this he built a wall without the city of David on the west side of Gihon in the valley, even to the entering in at the fish gate, and compassed about Ophel, and raised it up a very great height, and put captains of war in all the fenced cities of Judah. And he took away the strange gods and the idol out of the house of the Lord, and all the altars that he had built in the mount of the house of the Lord and in Jerusalem, and cast them out of the city. And he repaired the altar of the Lord, and sacrificed thereon peace offerings and thank offerings, and commanded Judah to serve the Lord God of Israel. Nevertheless, the people did sacrifice still in the high places, yet unto the Lord their God only. Now the rest of the acts of Manasseh, and his prayer unto his God, and the words of the seers that spake to him in the name of the Lord God of Israel, behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel. His prayer also, and how God was entreated of him, and all his sin and his trespass, and the places wherein he built high places, and set up groves and graven images before he was humbled, behold, they are written among the sayings of the seers. So Manasseh slept with his fathers, and they buried him in his own house. And Amon his son reigned in his stead. Amon was two and twenty years old when he began to reign, and reigned two years in Jerusalem. But he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, as did Manasseh his father. For Amon sacrificed unto all the carved images which Manasseh his father had made, and served them, and humbled not himself before the Lord, as Manasseh his father had humbled himself. But Amon trespassed more and more, and his servants conspired against him, and slew him in his own house. But the people of the land slew all them that had conspired against King Amon, and the people of the land made Josiah his son king in his stead. Chapter 34 Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign, and he reigned in Jerusalem one and thirty years. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, and walked in the ways of David his father, and declined neither to the right hand nor to the left. For in the eighth year of his reign, while he was yet young, he began to seek after the God of David his father. And in the twelfth year he began to purge Judah and Jerusalem from the high places, and the groves, and the carved images, and the molten images. And they break down the altars of Balaam in his presence, and the images that were on high above them he cut down, and the groves, and the carved images, and the molten images he break in pieces, and made dust of them, and strode it upon the graves of them that had sacrificed unto them. And he burnt the bones of the priests upon their altars, and cleansed Judah and Jerusalem. And so did he in the cities of Manasseh, and Ephraim, and Simeon, even unto Naphtali, with their mattocks round about. And when he had broken down the altars and the groves, and had beaten the graven images into powder, and cut down all the idols throughout all the land of Israel, he returned to Jerusalem. 
Now in the eighteenth year of his reign, when he had purged the land and the house, he sent Shaphan the son of Azaliah, and Maasiah the governor of the city, and Joah the son of Joahaz the recorder, to repair the house of the Lord his God. And when they came to Hilkiah the high priest, they delivered the money that was brought into the house of God, which the Levites that kept the doors had gathered, of the hand of Manasseh and Ephraim, and of all the remnant of Israel, and of all Judah and Benjamin. And they returned to Jerusalem. And they put it in the hand of the workmen that had the oversight of the house of the Lord, and they gave it to the workmen that wrought in the house of the Lord to repair and amend the house. Even to the artificers and builders gave they it, to buy hewn stone and timber for couplings, and to floor the houses which the kings of Judah had destroyed. And the men did the work faithfully, and the overseers of them were Jahath and Obadiah the Levites of the sons of Merari, and Zechariah and Meshullam of the sons of the Kohathites, to set it forward, and other of the Levites, all that could skill of instruments of music. Also they were over the bearers of burdens, and were overseers of all that wrought the work in any manner of service. And of the Levites there were scribes and officers and porters. And when they brought out the money that was brought into the house of the Lord, Hilkiah the priest found a book of the law of the Lord given by Moses. And Hilkiah answered and said to Shaphan the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. And Hilkiah delivered the book to Shaphan. And Shaphan carried the book to the king, and brought the king word back again, saying, All that was committed to thy servants, they do it. And they have gathered together the money that was found in the house of the Lord, and have delivered it into the hand of the overseers, and to the hand of the workmen. Then Shaphan the scribe told the king, saying, Hilkiah the priest hath given me a book. And Shaphan read it before the king. And it came to pass, when the king had heard the words of the law, that he rent his clothes. And the king commanded Hilkiah, and Ahikam the son of Shaphan, and Abdon the son of Micah, and Shaphan the scribe, and Asiah a servant of the king, saying, Go, inquire of the Lord for me and for them that are left in Israel and in Judah, concerning the words of the book that is found. For great is the wrath of the Lord that is poured out upon us, because our fathers have not kept the word of the Lord to do after all that is written in this book. And Hilkiah, and they that the king had appointed, went to Huldah the prophetess, the wife of Shalom the son of Tikvath, the son of Hazra, keeper of the wardrobe. Now she dwelt in Jerusalem in the college. And they spake to her to that effect. And she answered them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Tell ye the man that sent you to me, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring evil upon this place, and upon the inhabitants thereof, even all the curses that are written in the book which they have read before the king of Judah, because they have forsaken me, and have burnt incense unto other gods, that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore my wrath shall be poured out upon this place, and shall not be quenched. And as for the king of Judah, who sent you to inquire of the Lord, so shall ye say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel concerning the words which thou hast heard. Because thine heart was tender, and thou didst humble thyself before God when thou heardest his words against this place and against the inhabitants thereof, and humbledst thyself before me, and didst rend thy clothes and weep before me, I have even heard thee also, saith the Lord. Behold, I will gather thee to thy fathers, and thou shalt be gathered to thy grave in peace. Neither shall thine eyes see all the evil that I will bring upon this place and upon the inhabitants of the same. So they brought the king word again. Then the king sent and gathered together all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem. And the king went up into the house of the Lord, and all the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and the priests and the Levites, and all the people, great and small. And he read in their ears all the words of the book of the covenant that was found in the house of the Lord. And the king stood in his place and made a covenant before the Lord to walk after the Lord and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all his heart and with all his soul to perform the words of the covenant which are written in this book. And he caused all that were present in Jerusalem and Benjamin to stand to it. And the inhabitants of Jerusalem did according to the covenant of God, the God of their fathers. And Josiah took away all the abominations out of all the countries that pertained to the children of Israel, and made all that were present in Israel to serve, even to serve the Lord their God. And all his days they departed not from following the Lord, the God of their fathers. Chapter 35 Moreover, Josiah kept a Passover unto the Lord in Jerusalem, and they killed the Passover on the fourteenth day of the first month. And he set the priests in their charges, and encouraged them to the service of the house of the Lord, and said unto the Levites that taught all Israel which were holy unto the Lord, Put the holy ark in the house which Solomon the son of David king of Israel did build. It shall not be a burden upon your shoulders. 
Serve now the Lord your God and his people Israel, and prepare yourselves by the houses of your fathers after your courses, according to the writing of David king of Israel, and according to the writing of Solomon his son. And stand in the holy place, according to the divisions of the families of the fathers of your brethren the people, and after the division of the families of the Levites. So kill the Passover, and sanctify yourselves, and prepare your brethren, that they may do according to the word of the Lord by the hand of Moses. And Josiah gave to the people of the flock, lambs, and kids, all for the Passover offerings, for all that were present, to the number of thirty thousand, and three thousand bullocks. These were of the king's substance. And his princes gave willingly unto the people, to the priests, and to the Levites. Hilkiah, and Zechariah, and Jehiel, rulers of the house of God, gave unto the priests for the Passover offerings, two thousand and six hundred small cattle, and three hundred oxen. Conaniah also, and Shemaiah, and Nethaniel his brethren, and Hashabiah, and Jeiel, and Josabad, chief of the Levites, gave unto the Levites for Passover offerings five thousand small cattle, and five hundred oxen. So the service was prepared, and the priests stood in their place, and the Levites in their courses, according to the king's commandment. And they killed the Passover, and the priests sprinkled the blood from their hands, and the Levites flayed them. And they removed the burnt offerings that they might give according to the divisions of the families of the people to offer unto the Lord, as it is written in the book of Moses. And so did they with the oxen. And they roasted the Passover with fire according to the ordinance. But the other holy offerings sod they in pots, and in cauldrons, and in pans, and divided them speedily among all the people. And afterward they made ready for themselves and for the priests, because the priests, the sons of Aaron, were busied in offering of burnt offerings and the fat until night. Therefore the Levites prepared for themselves and for the priests, the sons of Aaron. And the singers, the sons of Asaph, were in their place according to the commandment of David. And Asaph and Heman and Jeduthun the king's seer, and the porters waited at every gate. They might not depart from their service, for their brethren the Levites prepared for them. So all the service of the Lord was prepared the same day to keep the Passover, and to offer burnt offerings upon the altar of the Lord, according to the commandment of King Josiah. And the children of Israel that were present kept the Passover at that time, and the feast of unleavened bread seven days. And there was no Passover like to that kept in Israel from the days of Samuel the prophet. Neither did all the kings of Israel keep such a Passover as Josiah kept, and the priests and the Levites, and all Judah and Israel that were present, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. In the eighteenth year of the reign of Josiah was this Passover kept. After all this, when Josiah had prepared the temple, Necho, king of Egypt, came up to fight against Carchemish by Euphrates. And Josiah went out against him. But he sent ambassadors to him, saying, What have I to do with thee, thou king of Judah? I come not against thee this day, but against the house wherewith I have war. For God commanded me to make haste. Forbear thee from meddling with God, who is with me, that he destroy thee not. Nevertheless, Josiah would not turn his face from him, but disguised himself that he might fight with him, and hearkened not unto the words of Necho from the mouth of God, and came to fight in the valley of Megiddo. And the archers shot at King Josiah, and the king said to his servants, Have me away, for I am sore wounded. His servants therefore took him out of that chariot, and put him in the second chariot that he had, and they brought him to Jerusalem. And he died, and was buried in one of the sepulchres of his fathers. And all Judah and Jerusalem mourned for Josiah. And Jeremiah lamented for Josiah, and all the singing men and the singing women spake of Josiah in their lamentations to this day, and made them an ordinance in Israel. And behold, they are written in the lamentations. Now the rest of the acts of Josiah, and his goodness according to that which was written in the law of the Lord, and his deeds first and last, behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah. Chapter 36 Then the people of the land took Jehoahaz the son of Josiah, and made him king in his father's stead in Jerusalem. Jehoahaz was twenty and three years old when he began to reign, and he reigned three months in Jerusalem. And the king of Egypt put him down at Jerusalem, and condemned the land in an hundred talents of silver and a talent of gold. And the king of Egypt made Eliakim his brother king over Judah and Jerusalem, and turned his name to Jehoiakim. And Necho took Jehoahaz his brother, and carried him to Egypt. Jehoiakim was twenty and five years old when he began to reign, and he reigned eleven years in Jerusalem. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord his God. Against him came up Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon, and bound him in fetters to carry him to Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar also carried off the vessels of the house of the Lord to Babylon, and put them in his temple at Babylon. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoiakim, and his abominations which he did, and that which was found in him, behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah. And Jehoiakim his son reigned in his stead. 
Jehoiakim was eight years old when he began to reign, and he reigned three months and ten days in Jerusalem. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. And when the year was expired, King Nebuchadnezzar sent and brought him to Babylon with the goodly vessels of the house of the Lord, and made Zedekiah his brother, king over Judah and Jerusalem. Zedekiah was one and twenty years old when he began to reign, and reigned eleven years in Jerusalem. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord his God, and humbled not himself before Jeremiah the prophet, speaking from the mouth of the Lord. And he also rebelled against King Nebuchadnezzar, who had made him swear by God. But he stiffened his neck, and hardened his heart from turning unto the Lord God of Israel. Moreover, all the chief of the priests and the people transgressed very much after all the abominations of the heathen, and polluted the house of the Lord which he had hallowed in Jerusalem. And the Lord God of their fathers sent to them by his messengers, rising up betimes and sending, because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God, and despised his words, and misused his prophets, until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people, till there was no remedy. Therefore he brought upon them the king of the Chaldees, who slew their young men with the sword in the house of their sanctuary, and had no compassion upon young man or maiden, old man or him that stooped for age. He gave them all into his hand. And all the vessels of the house of God, great and small, and the treasures of the house of the Lord, and the treasures of the king and of his princes, all these he brought to Babylon. And they burnt the house of God, and brake down the wall of Jerusalem, and burnt all the palaces thereof with fire, and destroyed all the goodly vessels thereof. And them that had escaped from the sword carried he away to Babylon, where they were servants to him and his sons until the reign of the kingdom of Persia, to fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah, until the land had enjoyed her Sabbaths. For as long as she lay desolate, she kept Sabbath, to fulfill threescore and ten years. Now, in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord spoken by the mouth of Jeremiah might be accomplished, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom, and put it also in writing, saying, Thus saith Cyrus, king of Persia, All the kingdoms of the earth hath the Lord God of heaven given me, and he hath charged me to build him an house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Who is there among you of all his people, the Lord his God be with him, and let him go up. The end of the second book of the Chronicles.